Testing. Time is 9.05. How many we got? 102. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If we can all come in and please be seated so we can start our town meeting. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean O'Brien. I am the town moderator. Welcome to the April 29, 2003 annual town meeting. The time is now 9.05. We have a quorum of 102 voters present with more voters coming in. The tellers have been sworn. They are Greg Dalton, Buzz Artiano, and Kathy Jordan. Thank you and welcome. The warrant has previously been declared and properly noticed with the constable's return to service. As tradition dictates, I waive the reading of the warrant. Please rise for the state of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd ask that we take a moment of silence for those who've passed and for those residents of Kingston who continue to find strength and resilience and courage to endure through their personal struggles. Thank you. At this time, I'll go through the rules for town meeting. Town meeting is run per town meeting time in our local bylaws and traditions. If you wish to address town meeting, step up to a microphone. You can see there's two in each, there's one in each aisle. Wait to be recognized, and when you're recognized, state your name and your address. Please keep comments under two minutes, and may approach the microphone a second time, but only with new information, and keep, please keep those comments to under one minute. That's obviously for each article. I will explain procedure as needed, and will recognize requests for point of order, motions to Amend may be made, but must be reduced to writing prior to being debated. Questions of privilege raise issues affecting rights and privileges at town meeting. If your safety, dignity, integrity, if the volume, temperature, noise interfere with your ability to hear, speak, or to participate in town meeting, please yell out question of privilege. Please remain seated unless you are trying to speak at the microphone. Please do not stand in doorways. Please try to keep the aisles clear and take conversations outside. I hope to continue to have a spirited debate and that the meeting both supports and challenges the issues that are presented. You may make a motion to call a question, but you may not debate and then make the motion. Please be respectful to everyone and remember it's okay to have a different opinion. Does everyone understand the rules of town meeting? Can everyone take a moment to find the exits? They're in the back and on the sides, uh, to the left and right of me. A um, few announcements um, I'll address at the end, but um, welcome our new elected officials, uh, new members of the Finance Committee. And with that, we'll go to the opening motion. Move that the following non-residents and non-registered voters be allowed to enter and address town meeting. Kate Federoff, Town Council. Keith Hickey, Town Administrator. David Walsh, water, Wastewater Superintendent. Jason Silva, Community Development Director. Carol McCoy, Finance Director, Town Accountant. Tina Betty, Human Resource Manager. Matt Pinella, Conservation Agent. Gloria Mitchell, Assistant Administrator. Mary Beth Lawton, Director of Elder Affairs. Jill Prue, Superintendent of Schools. Christine Healy, Director of Business Services. Silver Lake Regional School District. John Gouvermont, Evergreen Cemetery President. Joe O'Brien, Evergreen Cemetery Vice President. Second. And do we need to? Liz Lydon. Liz Lydon. Yes. Liz Lydon. Uh, Town Council. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to the normal, as, as I've done since I've been here, um, 
I think my fourth year now, I have what's known as a consent agenda. It's public, it's, it was posted outside, and this is um, my motion to, expect, to expedite this meeting and address those matters that require action, but tend to uh, generate little to no debate. I'm going to put forward four separate consent agendas. E each consent agenda contains articles of the same subject matter. I will move each consent agenda containing multiple articles as a group in a single motion. I will read each article's number in the description. If anyone in the town meeting raises or states hold, those items will be removed and they may be debated in the normal course. Therefore, I will move the articles which have not been held in a single motion. So the first consent agenda I will read out is articles nine, the Renewable Energy Enterprise Fund budget, Article 10, Resolving Funds, Article 11, FY24 Transfer to Employment Liability Reserve Fund, Article 12, Transfer. They can't hear you. Oh. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. I apologize. So I'm going forward with the consent agenda. This is moving articles that routinely pass in order, as I've just stated. I'll read each article number out, and I'll read the description. If there's no holds as I read the article, then we'll move them as one vote. So for example, I'm gonna read article nine. If someone wants to debate a hold that it have in the normal course, when I read it, yell out hold. If I don't hear a hold, I'll go on to the next one. If you wanna hold article 10, say hold. So the first article is article nine, F F24 Renewable Energy Enterprise Fund Budget. Article 10, Resolving Funds. Article 11, FY24, Transfer to Employment Liability Reserve Fund. Article 12, Transfer to Other Post-Employment Health Insurance Liability Fund. Article 13, Transfer to Stabilization Fund. Article 14, Transfer to Capital Stabilization Fund. Article 15, Transfer to Municipal Buildings Insurance Fund. Having heard no holds, Can I get a second? No, you gotta move, you gotta move them. You gotta say having heard yeah. no votes, move them. Having heard no votes, I will move articles nine through 15 on the consent agenda. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed? Nice. Passes unanimously. Second consent agenda is article five, waste Department Enterprise Budget and Retained Earnings Appropriations. Article 6, Water Department Main Street Water Main Project. Article 7, F24 Waste Department Enterprise Budget and Surplus Revenue Appropriations. Having heard no holds, let's move to a vote. All those in favor of moving articles 5, 6, and 7 as printed, say aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to consent agenda number three. Article 24, Kingston, uh, Fund Kingston Superior Officers Association Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 064 contract. Article 25, Fund Kingston's Patrolman Association, Association Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 064 contract. Article 26, Fund uh, International Association of Firefighters Local 2337 contract. Article 27, Fund Lieutenant of Kingston Police Department's agreement. Having heard no holds, let's move to a vote. All those in favor of moving Articles 24, 25, 26, and 27 as printed in the warrant, say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to the fourth consent agenda. Articles 35, Amendment to General Bylaws, Chapter 4, Council on Aging. Article 36, Amendment to General Bylaws, Chapter 4, Affordable Housing Trust. Article 37, Amendment to General Bylaws, Chapter 13, Wetlands Protection Bylaw. 
So I have a hold on number 37. I do not have a hold on 35 or 36. So I'll move articles 35 and 36 on the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Articles 35 and 36 pass unanimously. Article 37 will be debated in the normal course. We're on the move. And who's presenting the next article? All right, this is uh, Article 1, Prior Year Bills. I move the town transfer the sum of $7,501.32 from prior year's special articles identified in the warrant. Seeing no, seeing, oh, no, you can go. <laughs> seeing, yes, seeing no one, would anyone like to be heard on this? Seeing no one at the microphones, I'll hold a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article number two. Did you cross out all the ones that are done now? No, not yet. From the consent. Okay. Article 2, Supplemental FY23, uh, Kingston School Budget. Move the town transfer $650,000 from free cash for the purpose of supplementing the Kingston School Department's FY23 operating budget. This article allocates funding to supp supplement a portion of the Kingston School Department FY23 budget shortfall. Seeing no one approach the microphones, we'll move it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Does, just a, by a show of hands real fast, I can read off the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee's votes on that, but does everyone have it in front of them? Yep. Okay, so I'm not gonna read those off if it's, um, if it's contested, I'll point it out, but if it's all favorable votes, I'm, it's in front of you, so kind of slow me down from talking a little. I'll stop on that one. Go ahead. Article 3, Supplemental FY23 Fire Department Budget to see if the town will vote to transfer from unexpected articles the sum of $13,652.72 to supplement the FY23 Fire Department Budget for the following projects or take any actions relative there too. That was a lot of order. Uh, move the town transfer the sum of $13,652.72 from prior year special article identified in the warrant. Can I get a second now? He just, I want, okay. Seeing no one approaching the microphones, I'll move this to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mary, are you uh, going to do article number four? Yes, I am. Mary, before we get started, um, Mary's been on the finance committee and has um, been invaluable to everyone in this town, myself, um, her knowledge, what she brings from her job. Um, and has been very supportive, but she's stepping down. She has college-age children, and she's this is a commitment. She's not paid for it. She does it out of her her heart and her love for the community. And I'd just like to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully coming back next year. <laughs> I'll be sitting out there instead of over here. But yes. Paul right. said that too. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. <clears throat> Article four. Move the town appropriate the sum of $52,454,230 to be expended for the operating budgets for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, for personal services and for expenses as printed in the handout entitled Town of Kingston FY24 Summary Budget 
and to meet such appropriation that the sum of $51,620,517 be raised and appropriated, the sum of $422,937 be transferred from water enterprise revenue, the sum of $311,950 be transferred from wastewater enterprise revenue, the sum of $79,326 be transferred from the septic betterment fund balance, the sum of $12,000 be transferred from the Inspectional Services Revolving Fund, and the sum of $7,500 be transferred from the Municipal Building Insurance Fund. Exactly. All set? Yeah. And hold on. All right, well, the budget's been read. Um, seeing no one at the microphone, I'll move it to a vote. All those oh, in favor? Do you, do you, I was gonna. Oh, you want to go? Okay. I was gonna oh. <laughs> give some remarks about. Unless you guys are ready for a vote. We're ready. Ready. All right. That is the easiest budget ever. Fifty-four million. Mary, we don't have a vote yet. Mary, hold on. Uh, <laughs> all those in favor, as the budget printed in the warrant, say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to Article 8. Right. 13 Oak Street, Kingston. I'd like to move to take Articles 47 and 48 out of order. I already called for 8. That's a problem. I can do it next if you like. I've already called for an article. So if you want to stand up after 8, you can. I'll entertain your motion. That's fine. Thank you. I apologize. Oh, no. Move the town appropriate the sum of $12 million to pay costs of designing, construction, constructing, equipping, and furnishing leaching fields and infrastructure to support the wastewater treatment plant and support the reduction of nitrogen levels in town, including but not limited to the construction and or reconstruction of related pump stations, the extension of related sewer lines, the acquisition of any easements and land necessary to complete the improvements described in the warrant and the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto. And to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen is authorized to borrow this amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, 8 parentheses 14 and or Chapter 29C or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, uh, bonds or notes of the town, therefore, that the Board of Selectmen is authorized to contract for and expend any federal or state aid available for the project, and that all or any portion of the amount to be borrowed by this vote be borrowed through Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, the trust for the affluent recharge site number three and sewer expansion, and any appropriate official or officials of the town are hereby authorized to execute any agreements that may be required in connection with any such loan. Okay, basically this is to an article to replace leaching fields that are currently 23 years old at the Indian Pond Country Club driving range. You all have a handout, hopefully you took it off the table. Basically what it does, I'm just gonna hit on key points of the, of the facts, and those are, there are no replacement fields available when the current leaching fields start to break down. The leaching fields have been utilized 365 days a year for 23 years. The leaching fields have, have not been rested in 23 years as there are no alternative fields. And approximately two billion gallons of affluent has been discharged to the leaching fields over 23 years. Um, if, the leach, if this article doesn't pass and the leaching fields fail and being 23 years old, they are at a point that you, it's, we need to take it seriously that they could be failing. I'm not going to say it's tomorrow. I'm not going to say it's two years from now. There is no time frame. Typically a leaching field of this magnitude can last 20 to 25 years. Um, so if this does not pass at town meeting, what will happen is we'll have to react to a situation 
rather than being proactive and planning on it now with state aid, which we've been approved for a low interest loan through the state. And that would be a year before we could even start construction if the site is, is fails. So on the other side, I've listed the attempts that we've made in the past 10 years to be proactive. In 2011, we acquired a budding land to the Davis property, 2018. Town meeting voted to acquire the Davis property in part for the leaching fields. Last year, the year before, we worked on getting all of the design done and we're permitted by DEP to open up those fields when constructed. So basically, if it comes down to we're looking for $12 million to construct leaching fields for four tanks. It will require um, some of the alternatives to that is I've talked with legal counsel and it says leaching fields will be built for four tanks. The sewer commissioners will continue to work with legal counsel on merits of capacity allocation. Talked with legal counsel about the possibility of in our rules and regulations allocating specific gallons for specific reasons, most of them being environmental. And if I could, through the moderator, Kate, okay, could you? Sure. So um, if there's a can am I beeping there? Um, if there is um, a, ne a necessary result to allocate the existing um, capacity of the fourth tank, you can theoretically do that. It might take some buy-in from DEP to do that. You would have to allocate between commercial and residential. Um, 40B projects would likely be um, precluded from having that allocation uh, prevent their development because of the, the rules that surround 40B that most of the local regulations aren't applicable. Um, the other thing that you would be concerned with is it would be viewed as a improper moratorium, um, which would essentially just inhibit development, which is sort of a moratorium really on building permits. Um, so there could be a risk of challenge there. Does that answer your question, Elaine? Uh, yes. It, yes. I just wanted everybody to be clear. Um, so. Yeah, so um, some sewer moratoriums have been challenged because what it is viewed at in certain circumstances where there aren't environmental um, reasons for pushing it forward is that in fact it looks like just a, 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 an ability to prevent further develop in the, in the town without saying so. So it's a sewer moratorium in sheep's or a building moratorium in sheep's clothing essentially um, and what the law provides is that people are allowed to develop their property unless there's some sort of reason not to um, you would have to say that expressly that you are having a building moratorium without being a challenge um, by just simply saying it's a sewer moratorium. There could be an argument to say that because these leaching fields are, are failing, we need the capacity in the fourth tank because of the nitrogen um, environmental results that happen when you're, when you're releasing less well-treated effluent, you know, and it results in algae blooms and things like that in your ponds. Um, so you could make that argument, and the question is, would the courts buy that argument? And it's, at this point, it's unclear. Does that make sense? And, and if I could, um, part of this fourth tank, we've talked about it for the past year with the selectmen. We've done a presentation with our engineers that there is a nitrogen, le nitrogen issue level in Kingston Bay. It's owned by Kingston, it's owned by Plymouth, and it's owned by Duxbury. And the town needs to come up with a plan to address that issue um, or private septic system properties will need to upgrade their plans, uh, upgrade their personal systems to meet the new nitrogen levels. Part of this, as mentioned in the presentation, that the sewer system could be used as a tool to help um, 
meet those DEP requirements without requiring individual households to upgrade their septic systems. I just, I just, uh, Sheila Vaughn, Seven Frank Street, Kingston, Mass. Um, just, I know that there's been a water moratorium right now from the water commissioners, and I just wanted to know how that would affect, would this affect this position um, right now? Because obviously, I think people think if there's a water moratorium, then having a moratorium on the sewer as well would make it no building happen right now in the town. Um, but also, how bigger, bigger. Investments like the um, like so, like Silver Lake would have its own wastewater treatment plant. So I just wanted to know how that you know I think people in town are kind of thinking if we stop the leaching fields, we'll stop the building. So I just wanted to know if there was a feeling on that. I I don't know that I I can say that one way or the other. I mean if water commissioners aren't taking on any, I don't know what the moratorium really says, but if they're not taking on um, any additional projects because of limitations, then it, I would imagine that would mean that um, we could still build the, the, the leaching fields, we just wouldn't have any customers to pay for it. Thank and then in time, the existing sewer customers would be paying when the system fails. Today, we know the dollars for that, Five years, next year we don't. Helen Flane, I'll get the mics on. Um, that, was a, that was a great spirited debate between amongst yourselves, but um, I think that the public deserves to ask questions about this. Um, Mrs. Priori, as you said at the um, Board of Selectmen's meeting on April 11th, if we build it, they will come. And I think that all, many of us are here in the room today because we don't want the building to continue. And the way that this article is written, this is not a moratorium on sewer. This is an expansion of leaching fields so that we can have more developments in town. That's what this article is about. And there are currently several um, developments that are in the pipeline, whether commercial or, de or residential. And we just saw in articles you know, two, three, and four today that our budget increases are because of the current existing developments that have recently gone into town. We can't, th this growth is not, um, not sustainable for Kingston to continue to build residential housing and residential developments um, in the form of 4DB or what have you because we've expanded our leaching fields. And at all of your meetings, you know, you have constituents asking you, um, whether at the planning board, the board of selectmen, or the sewer commissioner, how can we stop this building? And what your reply should be is vote no on this article, because if we vote no on this article, then without the leaching field expansion, then we can't continue to allow developers to come into town. So this is not an article that says it's moratorium on sewer. This is an article to not continue to expand the leaching fields to continue to allow the building. And what I do want to say in regards to sewer capacity, and if they build it, they will come. As a um, town sewer resident, my bills have um, increased to upwards of $600 over the last couple of years. They've regularly been between $250 and $300 for town sewer. On top of that, my family pays $384 a year for the sewer betterment, which was when our property was connected to the sewer line. Prior to us buying our property, we assumed the remaining portion of the betterment. So when if these sewer lines are connected by anyone's property, you're required to, build, to buy into it, whether you want to or not. You're required to go from your $50 a quarter water bill plus you know, pumping every few years to having town sewer. And it's not an option. And so I just want everyone to be aware that no matter how this article's written, it's not written as a moratorium. That legality could be challenged if it was. It's written as a, an expansion of um, leaching field, which would allow for more development that we cannot control. Thank you. I'd like to respond now. Um, as a sewer custom, as a sewer commissioner, it would be short-sighted for us to be concerned with leach, not being concerned with leaching fields that are 23 years old. Our responsibility to the sewer customers in the town of Kingston is uphold what we're required to do by law, and that's to maintain the infrastructure of a municipal sewer system. 
Will it bring development? Will it bring growth? That's up to the boards and committees. Again, we do not authorize building permits. We don't vet projects. We are here, and the reason it says expansion is because it was tied to the overall plant expansion. That's how DEP looks at these leaching fields as an extension of the original project that we're in the middle of, of expanding the plant. The leaching fields were a part of that. We had funding in the last round to do that. We were funded up to $28 million to do that. Um, so, you know, and I just want to say there was, there's been talk out there that Sacred Heart is connecting to municipal sewer. That's not a true statement. Sacred Heart has asked the sewer commissioners to manage a private system on their site. It has nothing to do with sewer capacity. You can't get the sewer line from here to there. It's not going to happen for Sacred Heart. Pine, Pine Dubois, 93 Elm Street in Kingston. Um, I want to expand on what Elaine has been saying, and I want to support the Sewer Commission on this. Um, we absolutely need additional leaching capacity. The existing one up at Indian Pond Estates is not without consequence. In fact, my pumps, my sump pumps in my basement on the side of the hill, that is quite a distance from there on Elm Street, on the west side of Elm Street, are still pumping every five minutes. Why? Because of what is going into Indian Pond Estates. And I would say that it's not exactly being treated anymore. The, the nitrogen problem is not just a bay problem. The, the Jones River um, from Silver Lake, including Silver Lake, all the way to the bay, is nitrogen loaded and, and a TMDL is required. TMDL stands for total daily maximum load. Um, DEP will write that TMDL. The town of Kingston will have to comply with it. And if and I don't really think that it's true that if we do this, there will be a boom in development in Kingston. Yes, people will want to tie to sewer. Developers will want to tie to sewer, but what Elaine said is true. We have a planning board, we have a zoning board, we have a conservation commission. The fact of our environment here is that we are loaded with water. We have more water than most places. We have tributaries, we have streams. We need to care about what goes into our septic systems and what gets into that water. If we don't have updated systems, and in fact, even the water department doesn't have, you know, that's a real problem for us. We should have, all of us, the greatest septic systems we can, and if we can't have a great septic system, we should tie to sewer. I'm considering that on Elm Street because really the water department belongs on sewer, and probably I do too if you have that much water under your house. You know, and that means Elm Street up to the hill. If we don't do this, the, this is cheap compared to what it's going to be. So I just ask that we really open our brains and not, not try to you know, control the development of the future because we're afraid of it. We try to development properly, develop properly because we're aware of our environment, we understand our environment, and we want to take care of our environment. Hello, Ted. Yes, sir. My name is Doug Gaboni. I'm 45 Howlands Lane. Um, for the sake of uh, not going through redundancy, I second pretty much everything Jeannie said. But my question is, uh, in regards to Title V systems when private homes, how does that have any relevance to our current sewer system? Because you were talking about private septics, and I was just curious how, just curious how that relates nitrogen level-wise to what we're talking about here. Well, as Pine said, DEP is going to be coming down with uh, finalizing their rules and regulations to address the nitrogen issue. SUA um, has helped that situation in Kingston, but Kingston's going to be told you have to uh, the nitrogen levels need to reduce in the town of Kingston by X. Without adding additional um, SUA plans to do that, then it's left to the private owners of septic systems in the 
current septic systems they have will need to be upgraded to be able to treat nitrogen to the level that DEP is going to require. And um, I've heard numbers anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand dollars to have that upgrade done to a private system. Uh, do you have another anything else, sir? I mean, I don't know if that necessarily answers my question, but um, yeah, I like I said, second what Jeannie says. Um, we're at capacity, especially in South Kingston, with traffic. And let's face facts. The reason a bunch of us are here today is just because of future development. And while I'm for it, I mean, manifest destiny, we, we build houses, that's what we do, we're people. We don't have much more room, and especially as somebody down in Rocky Nook, I mean, we just from traffic alone, I don't know how we're gonna deal with any building. So that's just where I'm at on this. So hopefully we get a no. Thank you. Uh, Board of Selectmen, can you hold your applause, please? Board of Selectmen. <laughs> Select board, sorry. Hello, Tyler Bouchard, 217 Parting Ways Road. Um, I want to just loop in another angle on this um, of a potential unintended consequences slash collateral damage that if we don't pass this, because we just passed a very large budget, right? A very, very large budget. One of the ways that we can manage these large budgets in the future is commercial. We, a lot of people here are very nervous about 40Bs, about residential. I am too. Absolutely. I think the state mandates are pretty, hor pretty horrendous. But with that, if we don't have capacity to expand into places like commercial that have a tax revenue that, does, that doesn't put children in schools, that is a net positive for the town, the collateral damage could be very severe in the future, because those are the things, those are some of the things that the town is looking to do. Other neighboring towns don't want any commercial because they, they live in their own little towns and they pay a million dollars in taxes a year. We need to manage those budgets, so we need to manage our tax base. And one of the ways to do that is to have more commercial. If we can't expand sewer into certain areas, we're gonna hog tie ourselves into a position where we can no longer deal as a business in a town to a tax base that we really need and want. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just going to ask for new information now. So if, if you've got something that hasn't been said, please approach the microphone. But if it's to repeat, I see there's two sides on this argument. But yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Brad Randall, 10 Grays Beach Road, when it comes to sewer infrastructure, 23 years is not that old for uh, leaching fields. Uh, this seems like infrastructure for development. Uh, and other towns don't want commercial because, you know, look at the mall. We've had commercial in the past. How has it worked out? It consumes an enormous amount of land for little return long term. So I'm against this 100, 110%. Thank you. Sir? Bob Koska, 55 South Street, currently Water Commissioner. Um, I think it's important for people to understand that the decision the Water Department made to uh, put a moratorium on hookups had nothing to do with the future. It had everything to do with the present. And from what I'm hearing from the sewer department, they're saying exactly the same thing. We're not talking about the future, we're talking about now. Currently, right now, the uh, water department is out of compliance with recommendations from the state DEP. According to their rec regulations, we should be able to take our top water producing well offline and have the rest of the wells provide enough water for the people in Kingston pumping 16 hours a day or less. Currently, if our number one water source is offline, all of the other wells would have to pump 24 hours a day. For anybody who understands how that equipment works and how uh, wells work, that would deteriorate the wells very quickly. So we're going to be needing to put in a new well, not to cover any of the new development, but simply to, pay, to provide water for the people that are in town now. What I'm hearing from the sewer department is, if we don't do something about the current leaching fields, which are already right at the point where they should be uh, um, decommissioned, then the entire sewer, sewer system will fail in the town of Kingston if you don't have leaching fields. So in an effort to try to stymie development, and by the way, there are all sorts of ways 
that development can happen against our wishes. 40 bees, for example. These things can happen in spite of people not wanting growth and development. As far as I'm concerned, what, what the Soil Department is asking for right now has nothing to do with future development. It has everything to do with providing the necessary foresight to make sure the inf infrastructure is in place to cover what we currently have. Elaine, final word? And yes, and thank you. I just want to also say we don't have the same advantage that the Water Department does of just, they've got existing wells. We can't turn off the municipal sewer system to 1,800 properties if this fails. That's the long and short of it. Um, and, it and I just want to make it perfectly clear, if this article doesn't pass, we will be addressing this again but not with the luxury of being able to be proactive. We will be reactive in an emergency situation with 1,800 properties, and I'm one of them, that will be affected if and when the systems fail. That's, that, that's simply what this is, and we're gonna have to plan with the existing sewer customers to raise rates that haven't been raised in over 15 years to pay for a capital plan that's going to that's going to have to be put in place. So, thank you. Sir, I missed I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Yes. No, the microphone's fine. Oh, okay. Good morning. I'm good. State your name and your address, please. Do the moderator. My name is Brian Donahoe, 17 School Street, Kingston, 36-year resident of the town, and one of the inaugural sewer commissioners. Um, 23 years ago, I was standing here begging for money, trying to explain what we're trying to do, and we're here. Uh, I'm going to add on to everything I think that's already been said, but this is part of a plan that was made, put together 25 years ago, actually. And as Elaine just said, you can't stop the sewage flow. It's impossible. So let me take you a little bit, and, and I mean, uh, Pine, thank you for your comments. I was gonna repeat those, the TMDL and all that. By way of introduction a little bit more is, uniquely, I was the director of water pollution control for the state of Massachusetts. I was the guy who forced Kingston through a compliance edict to do what they did 25 years ago. Um, my wastewater has been my business all along for 50 years. So I know what I'm talking about. Um, let's take the position to get to the worst case scenario that you can't stop the sewage flow. One of the things that was built into this system was we need a new leaching field to rest the one that's in presently before you. Uh, a leaching field is part of a biological system. Bacteria are in that field that complete the treatment process that's up at the dump. There's a lot of bacteria in there. They do the final treatment, but they do not disinfect the wastewater. That's taken care of in the groundwater as it goes through the rest of the soil, okay? We don't put chlorine in there. If you did, you'd kill everything. Chlorine kills everything. So, here we have with the tired leaching field that's been known for a long time that needs to be replaced. Back in the day, we went and made sure we had land for the second field, which is before you tonight, today, and Let's presume that that field gets really tired and next summer breakout in the um, golf course at Indian Pond Estates happens. Well, now we got a real problem. We have sewage partially treated, shutting down the golf course, number one suit. All the weddings that are going on because of this leaching field failure, all those people, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and their daughters and sons who are going to get married, we have to shut that down because the odor is terrible because it's been failing. Any lawyers in the group, you can see where I'm going with this. So what we did, we built in when this situation, which we did plan not to have happen, happens. There are pump stations all around the town. There's one pump station that's near the end of the line at the Jones River route tw uh, in Main Street, Second Brook Street. When and if you had this situation and you had a failure, 
of the leaching field, you had to put the water somewhere. You're not going to just throw it into the ground. You're not going to throw it in the air. You're not going to spray it around. You're not going to shut the treatment plant down. So you're going to have to deal with DEP under an enforcement action, and you're going to start discharging some portion of that water directly into the, sewage, into the Jones River because it has no other place to go. 30 seconds, sir. So suit number two is going to happen. You just shut down all the shellfish operators who are down in Duxbury Bay, who now are there because the water's clean. You have all kinds of issues start happening. I urge you to vote 100% to support this article, or these scenarios are going to start manifesting themselves next year, the year after, the year after that. Thank you. Uh, this article number eight was Board of Selectmen 3-2, favorable vote, finance. Just a quick question to Ms. Fiore. Uh, Dick Arruda, 13 Oak Street. Isn't, in fact, there a leaching field under the transfer station? Yes, leaching fields under the transfer station has a capacity of 125,000 gallons per day. Right now, we're discharging 500,000 gallons per day. So it's not an, a replacement leaching field. It's an additional leaching field to supplement what we already oh, have. I just, just check. Thank you. I'm going to take a vote now, um, seeing no one at the microphones. Do you have something new, sir? Just new information. All right, Jim Franklin, 53 Winthrop Street. Um, I, I understand the need for the leaching fields, right? I, I understand how leaching fields work. Uh, there's a couple of things I think we need to consider. Um, one, I, I believe that <coughs> the, that, uh, the golf um, place was supposed to be using some of the effluent in their ponds, and, and I understand that right now they're taking water out of the ground to fill their water features. I believe that that was built into the permitting process and, and for whatever reason it just wasn't imp uh, implemented. So I think that doom and gloom is not the way to spin this thing. I completely agree that we need to improve infrastructure. I also agree that giving carte blanche to the sewer commission to just uh, do $12 million worth of work in support of just creating capacity is going to come with unintended consequences, right? The people of the town don't really want these unbridled monster developments. Right? We want controlled growth. So as written, I don't think this article does enough to control the approvals when something comes in as a 100-unit uh, building on a, a parcel that was previously undeveloped because it wouldn't park. So from that perspective, I don't think that we should be approving uh, this article this cycle. I think that it needs to go back to the drawing board. I think we should table it. And I think that if it comes back with certain stipulations that prevent the unintended consequences from just having extra cap capacity, then this is definitely a viable and, and a worthwhile project. I just think in its current iteration, we should not be saying yes to this one. That's all I got. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna move this to a vote, seeing no one at the podium. Um, this was uh, Board of Selectmen, a favorable vote three to two, Finance Committee five zero, and Capital Planning, a favorable vote of three to two. All those in favor of Article 8 say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Counters? Folks, uh, it's great to see as many people as we have here. It's been a long time since we've had this kind of turnout, so it's fantastic. Um, we, did, uh, we did have a uh, uh, situation with the cards. So I wanted to let the tellers know and everybody sitting next to you, there's both a red and a, an orange card. So you count both, red and orange. Hold on. Everyone in the back, if you're in a doorway, I, I, you got to come in if you want to vote. You, it's just too hard if you're moving around. So for, can you just have a seat for the vote anywhere? Then if you want to stand up, I'll let the details. Thank you for being here, police officers. Um, keep the area. So can you take your cards out, please? So, Kathy, you're just going to count that side, sir. You're going to count this table in the middle. Sir, you're going to count this table on the left side. All right. All those in favor, please hold out your red cards and raise them.
or orange cards, red and orange. Bruce, did you count the two ladies in the back in the doorway that wouldn't have a seat with their cards up? Or, Kathy, did you count those? That's what I was going to Okay, count. Bruce, did you count the two ladies in the doorway? I, I did. Okay, I'll count. Okay, thank you. Please, next time I need you to have a seat. It makes it difficult because we split the room for counting. You got them? You got them, right? I got them. Okay. I got the Okay, what do you got? How many you got? 60. 60? 60. 32. 32. And if you're opposed, can you take out your card and raise it? Can you please have a seat if you have a card? Gentlemen in the back, can you please be seated? We're trying to have a fair count here. It's difficult for the tellers. Thank you for your cooperation. 49. 38. Any math people here? One thirty in favor, one twenty four opposed, it fails. Can you, can you fails. Can you explain why? Yeah, can you explain it's why? a two, it requires a two third majority vote. And it was almost a fifty fifty. <laughs> Moving on to article number what? Oh, I appreciate you. You got faster. I didn't say Did you. I get back in time? You did. Okay. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, Dick Aruda, 13 Oak Street, Kingston. I'd like to uh, make a motion to move Articles 47 and 48 out of order. So the, the, that's the second. The bylaws require it. It, it requires a uh, majority vote uh, to take the vote out of order. If you want it, you got to get to a microphone. I don't know what that means. No, up there. Doug Dondero, 14 Copper Beach. I will vote to rescind what we just did on Article 8. Okay, you can't do that. There's no. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, can you explain reconsideration? Yes, in the bylaws, there is no reconsideration per, per the bylaws that Kingston voted on. So eight fails. Dick, you're, you moved to take 47 and 48 out of order. Yes. And we had a second. Who was the second? second. Thank you. Explain. Uh, these, these two articles uh, address what the state calls a soil reclamation order. And what those are, for any of you that have been to the transfer station, if you notice this mountains growing over in the O'Donnell sand and gravel, that's reclaimed material. No, no, what no, is hold on, but not, I, why do you want to take it out of order, is my question. To, to take a vote now. Okay. Right, we, <laughs> any other reasons? <laughs> I don't need it. Okay. So it, it, he's, he's asking to take this out of order. The bylaws require, allow it. It requires a majority vote. It has a second. All in favor of moving articles 47 
and 48 out of order, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Ooh. Guess I go sit down. Yep. <laughs> You know what, I'm gonna count that in an abundance of caution. Really? Yep, let's count it. Oh. Buzz, I only got you for two more. If you're in favor of taking it out of order, 47 and 48, please raise your orange or red cards high. You got them. Wait, you guys four? Four out four. Yeah. 25. 25. They succumbed to peer pressure. <laughs> I got 25, 31, and 19. Was it 25 or 25? 25, because I believe. Really okay, you can put your cards down. All those opposed, can you put your cards up? It fails. No. <laughs> Moving on to Article Sixteen. Anybody? Who's presenting Sixteen? town rescind the use of free cash in article 25 of the 2022 annual town meeting in the amount of $100,000. Is this to return money to the town? Yep. I think yes. that's, we can probably move that to a vote. Yep. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Town just made $100,000. It p passes. <laughs> Seventeen? So as they're approaching on 17, um, it's kind of on my own motion, just to keep it clear, it's going to be kind of three separate motions. It's going to be one through eight will be a majority vote. And then there's a, three projects that are proposed will be a two-thirds vote. And then the out of projects nine through 14 will be a two-thirds vote. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. Move the town appropriate the sum of $1,282,923 for the capital expenditure items one through eight as printed in the warrant and to meet this appropriation with the sum of $1,282,923 be transferred from free cash. So again, we're just moving one through eight right now. It's a majority vote. Seeing no one at the microphone, I'll would you, would you like to say anything else right now, sir? No? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passage unanimously.
Move the town authorize under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 21C, under the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen, the purchase of financing agreements for the acquisition of equipment for remounting and refurbishing of Ambulance 1 and Ambulance 2, the replacement of the 2001 brush truck, and the replacement of a 2012 one-ton dump plow sander truck, as, a, as printed in the warrant, that may be acquired through the issuance of debt under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44. The term of such agreements not to exceed the useful life of the equipment as determined by the Board of Selectmen and authorize the department specified in the warrant to enter into such agreements on behalf of the town subject to the approval of an appropriation for the first year payment of the agreements as printed in the next motion. Second. Second. Can you briefly explain why this is here now? Why what's here? The why we're doing this as ah, yes. So this section of the article, sorry, let me go through my paperwork. We have uh, several uh, needs for capital items that, well, we're going to probably need them in a couple of years. Uh, with the issues in the supply chain and manufacturing, we are placing orders now for items that wouldn't be ready for two years. Uh, this is a serious concern. We cannot buy them the year we're going to need them. We have to put the orders in in advance. And the way, as I understand it, to do this is to um, purchase these with these lease agreements so we don't have to use our cash now. That being said, anyone want to be heard? Okay. This is a two-thirds majority of the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. Final motion of the article. Move the town appropriate the sum of $566,715 for the capital expenditures for lease purchases items 9 through 14 as printed in the warrant and to meet the appropriation of the sum of $566,715 be transferred from the capital stabilization fund said expenditures to be under the direction of the departments named. Seeing no, no one at the microphone, so it's a two-thirds majority vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Number 18. All right. So Article 18. FY24 equipment purchase project funding and it is move the town transfer the sum of $227,144.03 from free cash the sum of $24,015.15 from the unexpected articles here we go uh, as printed in the warrant and the sum of $100,000 from overlay surplus from a total transfer of $351,159.18 to be expended for the purchase or projects one through 11 for various town departments as printed in the warrant and to trade or dispose of any used equipment of those departments in the best interest of the town. Seeing no one at the microphones, this is a Majority vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Number 19. Move the town accept the recommendations of the trustees of the Elizabeth B. Sampson Memorial Fund to appropriate a sum of $42,500 from the income of said fund to be expended for the purposes the trustees recommend as printed in the warrant. I mean, nobody has any questions, nope. so. Uh, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Majority vote passes unanimously. Article 20, our distinguished clerk is going to present the motion. Uh, move that the town approve the report of the community preservation. I'm sorry. Move that the town approve the report of the Community Preservation Committee on the fiscal year 24 Community Preservation Budget and to appropriate from the Community Preservation Fund estimated revenues, the sums printed in the warrant to meet the administrative expenses and all other necessary and proper expenses 
of the Community President Committee for fiscal year 24 and further to, re further to approve motions one through nine and 11. The sums estimated for open space, historic resources, and community housing is printed in the warrant. Seeing no one at the microphone, I'll move this to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries with minimal opposition. I'm going to now have Nathan Hedberg present for um, Article 10, which is just because of different funding, it needed to be separated. What? Oh, Pine, I'm sorry, Pine Dubois is going to yeah. do 10. So, um, motion 10, move that the town appropriate from av available Community Preservation Act undesignated funds a sum of $35,000 for an appraisal and a preliminary site assessment report for the purchase of land along the Jones River that is important to restoring and protecting the riparian corridor for wildlife and open space continuity as printed in the warrant and recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. So the, the only reason for the amendment is <clears throat> that the majority of the 35,000 will be the preliminary site assessment report, and it wasn't mentioned in the original motion. Uh, and we were concerned about that, and so was the financial officer for the town. So we wanted it to be explicit that not only will there be an appraisal, but there will be a site assessment to evaluate if there's any contamination or hazards on the property that we would have to know about before suggesting a public acquisition. Seeing no one at the podiums, uh, microphones, um, majority vote, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. No opposition. What's next? Article 21. Do we, do we need to we move? Projects. What? We projects under I thought we did. We did, one through nine. Wait, nine. what? And that's why I'm not following. Did I we just, just voted that entire article? Yes. yes, we combined the whole, and I read it that way. Oh, I missed that. Wow, I did too. Okay. Okay. Do you want, does anyone? Well, it's already voted. Someone has a yeah, it's already voted. Is someone challenging that as a point of order? Did no one understand what we just did? As listed in the did, did everyone understand we voted one through nine as the project? We just numbered them? It would have been easier if it was done that way. One through nine and 11. Does everyone understand that? Yes. Correct. Okay. Does that change your vote? Okay. Would anyone like to, just as a point of order, reopen and revote this? No. No. Bo Board of Select Finance Committee? Anyone opposed? Now's your time. Seeing no opposition, we're going to move on. We should have just. We could have just taken one motion on the entire board. No, it's different sources. It was. All right. Article 21, consolidation and change from an elected to appointed treasurer collector position. Move the town will uh, move that the town will vote to authorize the board of selectmen to submit the home rule petition to the general court for special legislation to convert the treasurer and collector's positions from elected positions to a single appointed position as printed in the warrant and to authorize the town administrator to approve amendments which are within the scope of the general public objectives of said petition. Yes. Yes. Did we take the motion to let us yes. Yes. yes, that was the. That was fine. We did one through nine and ten. No, we did one through nine and eleven. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then Ms. Pine did ten. Good. Go ahead. Yep, great. Any awesome. Thank you. Um, this article uh, converts the positions of treasurer and collector from independent, independently elected positions to a single appointed position making the position more professionalized and more consistent with generally accepted government operations. Um, a lot of communities throughout the Commonwealth uh, have, have uh, 
made this move to go from an elected position um, as the treasurer and collector and then also combine them into one um, office. So the idea would be we would combine them, the elected position would term out um, after the collector's position in two years and after the treasurer's position in three years. And at that point, that job would then be up, as any other department head job would then be up in town for consideration from, from anybody. Um, the treasurer's position um, and collector's position, we've been extremely, extremely um, fortunate as a town to have um, great elected officials that have run those offices in the past. Um, and when I say fortunate, I mean lucky, 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 because it's a, it's a very serious uh, position, uh, the treasurer. And towns are starting to move in this direction for it to be an appointed position um, due to the fact that not every town, especially a town of 14,000, has someone that is willing to run for that type of office. Um, right now, we are fortunate to have um, somebody in that position, um, and we've had people in that position as well, that uh, know what they're doing and know how to manage the, um, the office. Uh, it's not something, in, a, in my opinion, it's not in the best interest of the town um, moving forward over the next decades or however long we're all here um, to leave that up to an election. And that sounds like a scary thing. And that's one, of, that's one of the reasons why it's failed in the past. The reality is when we open this position up to outside of the town of Kingston, we open ourselves up to talent, a talent pool that is greater than in just the 14,000. And although we've been fortunate in the past, this is a stopgap to make sure that we're not um, in a position in the future that could really harm the, um, the fiscal future of the town of Kingston. Would anyone like to be heard? Jean yeah. Coleman, 20 Hollands Lane. Essentially, this would just remove our right to vote for these positions, and um, it would then um, if it's an appointed position, it would be in the hands of the town administrator who is appointed by the five members of the Board of Selectmen and yada, 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 and essentially it would become more politicized in town hall than to leave it to the voters now, and I think our Board of Selectmen can agree that to this point we have not been dumb enough to elect somebody that's not qualified for these positions. So I think as the article's written, um, since we now have the same person in both of those positions, I think we would be um, wise to um, see what happens in regards to combining the salaries of those positions or working with the Board of Selectmen. And I'd like to see, from an outsider's perspective, more collaboration to um, work to combine this position that it's not going to threaten um, the current um, person that we voted for now twice. So with that said, I would be against this article as written right now. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Trika Harge, Five Post Court. Um, I am for this because I would like to ensure that whoever is in that position is not a popularity vote, but an actually a vote with, um, you know, that has the criteria to meet the requirements of this very important job. Um, so I think this should be something that's vetted and not just something that's voted on because you like this person. This is a really important job. They handle your money. They should know what they're doing. They should have qualifications. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Good morning. Jean Landis Nauman, 84 Wolf Pond Road. Having served on the Town Government Study Committee in 2008-2009, and then as chairman of the Implementation Committee, this was a recommendation that we offered to the town many years ago because we foresaw the need for professional skills in this position. We just passed a budget that exceeds 52 million. We are a 52 plus million corporation. I am concerned that we leave it up to, the, to whomever steps forward to serve in this position, whether or not they have qualifications, to handle $52 million. They have a serious role in how our money is invested, how it's handled, and I really urge the body to consider hiring someone 
with the necessary experience and qualifications. I appreciate the people who have stepped forward in the past and served, and I agree with Mr. Bouchard, we have been extremely lucky. Our luck may be running out. So please vote in favor of this article. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dorothy McFarland, 17 Wapping Road. I would like to separate the vote on combining and uh, appointing. I don't, I don't understand. As, as opposed to electing. You're trying. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm going to have to rule that out of order after consulting with legal counsel. So, so the, the, the issue is, is I don't think there's proper notice to know that we're going to create a, a dual role of appointed positions, of elected, of elected positions. Um, so I don't think there's been notice, especially the people who decided not to come to town meeting, even though they should be here. Um, so it's either gonna fail or it's gonna pass as written. Carol McCoy, finance director. Uh, in my past employment, I worked for a CPA firm where uh, we went in on a temporary basis to either assist or fill in for elected positions uh, for treasurer and collectors. And I can tell you, um, in some of the instances in the towns that I worked for, it, um, it was very uh, uh, scary, yeah, that's a good word, <laughs> uh, for some of the people that were, had been elected. Again, you have been very lucky in, in the people that you've elected and the people that have run for election. Um, but coming from experience, coming from uh, filling in for these positions, um, I would suggest definitely going for an appointed. Thank you. Would anyone else like to be heard? Yes. This article or this proposal has certainly been brought before this body a couple of times um, and it has been unsuccessful. Um, during that time, we've been fortunate as we've heard today that we have had folks serve in those capacities in those offices um, and have served us well. However, to make a statement about let's see and wait and see how things work out is really an irresponsible statement when we're talking about a $54 million operation, a community in which we all live um, and pay our taxes, and we want to be sure that every one of our offices is staffed by highly qualified, highly trained, highly vetted employees who serve in these capacities. Serving as the treasurer and collector of our community um, is a, a very crucial role in the fiduciary responsibility of the town of Kingston. Not being able to check, do a background check on a person who's going to hold that role is deficient in our hiring process. By having a combined and appointed position, and, and the key is appointed, you have the ability of doing all sorts of credential checks exposing yourself to a wider range of qualified candidates beyond the borders of the town of Kingston. We've talked about this before. We've talked about it at finance committee meetings. Um, and it is time that the town of Kingston really consider moving forward with combining this position and more specifically appointing this position so that we know that we have done our level best to get the best candidate to serve in this important fiduciary capacity. Thank you. Seeing no, seeing no one else at the microphones, I'll move this to a vote. It's a majority vote. It was favorable by the Board of Selectmen, 4 to 0, Finance Committee 211. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries the minimal opposition.
Jenna. Our clerk is going to step down for this one because this um, next article affects him, and we have someone stepping in. Ms. Morrissey. Did everybody, was this handout at the table? So does everybody have this? All right. That was inserted. It was inserted, so everybody has this? I don't Okay, all right. Say good morning, can you identify yourself? Good morning, Jana Morrissey, 25 Crescent Street, Assistant Town Clerk. Thank you. Try again, louder. Jana Morrissey, 25 Crescent Street, Assistant Town Clerk. Can you hear me? Article 22. Move the town set the salaries for elected officials as of July 1st, 2023 as follows. $46,606 for collector, $46,606 for treasurer, and $86,496 for town clerk. And further, move the sum of $7,664 be raised and appropriated for said salaries and that the town accountant be authorized to allocate such sums to the appropriate operating budgets. Okay. Did everybody follow that? You guys are, there was a. It should be 22,044. Oh, instead of, do, I, do you want me to read the whole thing or just the, the correction? Correction. Okay. Um, the sum has been changed from $7,664 to $22,044. So move the sum of $22,044 be raised and appropriated for said salaries. You want to explain? I will be happy to explain. Uh, this article sets the salaries, the compensation for our uh, now for our elected officials, the collector, the treasurer, and the town clerk. The town clerk's salary for FY24 is uh, being recommended at $86,496, and the salary for the now combined collector treasurer is being set at $93,212. We've simply split it 50-50 between the two budgets, but the salary would be $93,212. Any questions? Would anyone like to be heard? Okay, great. We'll move it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Great job. <laughs> Article 23. Move that the town vote to amend the wage and personnel bylaw, including the classification and compensation schedules A, B, and C contained therein, as printed in the document entitled Proposed Town of Kingston Wage and Personnel Bylaw with FY24 compensation schedules, and the effect of July 1, 2023, further amended the wage and personnel bylaw, including the classification and compensation schedules A, B, C contained therein as printed in a document entitled Proposed Town of Kingston Wage and Personnel Bylaw with FY24 compensation schedules, and that the sum of $61,441 be appropriated for this purpose, and to meet this appropriation to fund the FY24 salary increases, the sum of 48049 be raised and appropriated, the sum of 6696 be appropriated from water revenue, and the sum of 6696 be appropriated from wastewater revenue and to authorize the town accountant to allocate such sums to the appropriate operating budget. Um, this is the wage and personnel article. Uh, we had a, a very intense uh, compensation study done last year, and as a result of the compensation study, uh, positions were moved, salaries were increased, and this is the summary. Would anyone like to be heard? 
Seeing nobody, I'll move to a vote. Those all, all uh, excuse me, let me get my tongue back. Those all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 28. All right. Article 28, which is fund Kingston Town Employee Labor Union contract. Move the town raise and appropriate the sum of $31,300 to fund the first year of a three-year collective bargaining agreement between the Kingston Town Employee Labor Union contract and the town of Kingston. Second. Anyone like to be heard? Move to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. 29. All right, uh, Article 29 is Fund Kingston Town Employee Clerical Union Contract. I move the town raise and appropriate the sum of $40,200 to fund the first year of a three-year collective bargaining agreement between the Kingston Town Employee Clerical Union Contract and the Town of Kingston. Second. Anyone like to be heard? Seeing nothing, I'll move for a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 30. Jared Wakus, 15 Village Path. Move the town to appropriate the sum of 35000 to be transferred from the Waterways Improvement Funds for the purposes outlined in the warrant. Second. Would anyone like to be heard? I can give some details. What's up? I can give further details if you need. Anyone like to hear more? <laughs> Move to a vote. Those all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Good morning. Article 31, increase property tax exemption. Could you identify for yourself? Oh, yeah. Eric Sorry, Crone. Newly elected board member. <laughs> right. Eric Crone, 43 Longwood Circle. Uh, Article 31, increase property tax exemption for seniors and veterans. Move the town vote to increase the amount of the local property tax exemption for seniors and veterans provided for under the provision of Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 41C, and Mass General Law, 50, Chapter 59, Section 5N, from $750 to $1,000. Would anyone like to be heard? Move to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 32. How are you, sir? Uh, Michael Martin, 18 Prospect Court, uh, from the Board of Assessors. Move that the town vote to reduce the rate of interest that accrues on property taxes deferred by eligible seniors under Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 41A, third paragraph, subparagraph, which reduce the rate and shall apply to taxes assessed for any fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2023 or after. Hold on. Would anyone like to be heard? All right, let's move vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 33. Michael Martin, 18 Prospect Court, Board of Assessors. Uh, to see, uh, move to see if the town will vote to increase the gross receipts that seniors may have in the prior calendar year to be eligible to defer property taxes under the same Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 41A. Uh, that'll increase the, uh, the household limit. Would anyone like to be heard? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thirty-four. Move the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to submit a home rule petition to the general court for special legislation to establish the duties and responsibilities of the town administrator as printed in the warrant and to authorize the town administrator to approve amendments which are within the scope of the general public objectives of said petition. Because we have no existing bylaw 
or special legislation laying out the duties and responsibilities of the town administrator, there is a lack of consistency from one board of selectmen to the next and from one town administrator to the next. The proposed special legislation that is before you today for your consideration details the necessary qualifications and term of the appointment, the powers and duties of the role, the process for appointing an acting town administrator if and when necessary, and the process for removal. In summary, rather than relying on the results of contract negotiations, by enacting this legislation, we will clarify the expectations of the role and scope of the town administrator, and will finally have the consistency that we have lacked. Yes. I'd like to make an amendment to this article. Okay. You're gonna have to reduce it to writing. So it, it's in writing. It. Okay. Should I bring that up or should I talk about it? You can read it. Okay, so I'd like to um, move to amend Article 34 by adding the following link. Oh, I didn't say my name. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Janet Stanford, 53 Evergreen Street. Um, move to amend Article 34 by adding the following language at the end of Section 3B. Such appointments when made shall become effective on the 15th day following the day on which notice of the appointment is filed with the Board of Selectmen. Unless the Board of Selectmen shall within that period by a majority of all its members vote to reject such appointment. Can I just have a copy of that now? Can you hear me? Okay, so what it reads is, it reads as follows. Such appointments, when made, shall become effective on the 15th day following the day on which notice of the appointment is filed with the Board of Selectmen, unless the Board of Selectmen shall, within that period, by a majority vote of all its members, vote to reject such appointment. So essentially what it's doing is creating a veto power by the Board of Selectmen of the town administrator's appointments. Um, be advised too that this was in the draft, um, the initial draft that I believe was posted on the website and was subsequently removed uh, at, at a later date. So we discussed this in one of our Board of Selectmen meetings, whether or not the board should have veto power of the town administrator hiring new employees. <clears throat> so this amendment, if I'm explaining it correctly, Janet, this amendment gives the, yeah. the veto power back to the selectmen. Yeah, can I, can I talk about this now? Please. Okay. okay, I'm just gonna tilt that a little bit. Okay, so currently the Board of Selectmen, they do at this at their selectmen meetings, they vote to approve. You know, someone will say this, this um, person is selected as a new hire and the board will vote. And um, I like that idea to continue. So this, as Kim said, is just putting the language back in. I didn't make up this language, it was already there. And I think that the BOS should have the power to say yes, you know, to re reject someone because I hate to say this, but in the past, we've had some TAs that some people were not very fond of, let's say, and they didn't think they were making the right decisions. So if a T, and this is no reflection on Mr. Hickey, um, but if a TA selects someone and, the, you know, we, we don't let anyone say, we're not letting the Board of Selectmen have any ability to reject that person. And, you know, we elect the Board of Selectmen because we want them to really be running the town as much as possible. So why would we take this power away? I, I don't see any reason to take it away. Most of the time they're gonna approve people. But if there's something, you know, if there's any, um, sorry, I get nervous talking. Um, you know, if there's any, I forget what it's called, when you have relatives, you know, you're trying to get relatives into positions. Nepotism, nepotism thank you. <laughs> if there's any nepotism, or just anything. Or if we have a TA that we really don't agree with. Because, you know, the thing is, firing people is really hard, too. Once you get, once a TA gets someone in, it's hard to get someone out. You get someone out, then you open up to lawsuits, possibly. So I think the BOS should have the right 
on extreme instances or just whatever to say no for anybody that's going to get hired. Is there a second on this? Second. Okay. Would someone else like to be heard on this? Is the, this is for the amendment. This isn't whether to amend the motion. Paul Gallagher, 8 Longview Drive. Um, I wanted to speak to this <clears throat> because I'm sitting up at my desk and we just spent over $100 million. And we combined two positions, treasurer and collector, because we need professionalism. We have a town administrator that the Board of Selectmen appoints. His, his or her job is to run the day-to-day -day operations of the town. In the hiring process, we post, the, post the, uh, the job opening, we go gather all of the resumes, and as department heads, we decide this person would be best for my department, is the most qualified for my department. And with the town administrator's help, we get that person hired. Why would we not think that the town administrator should have that position, that, that opportunity, when it's his job? His job is to be a full-time job, a full-time town administrator, running the day-to-day -day operations. And as we grow and become more, more professional, we need someone to make those decisions. If I wanted to hire someone, I'd do that entire process. I'd go to him and say, this is my selection. And the, the board of selectmen, who meet every two weeks, could decide two weeks later that they don't want that person. Well, what is it that they know, serving in a part-time position, more than the person that's actually going to be working with them. That's really what it comes down to. You, you need to give the town administrator, we should be headed towards uh, um, a charter. We should be moving towards a charter to give people the more responsibility to do what they're supposed to be doing, to be, to be working on what, how much they should be, you know. It just, it just doesn't make sense. We're trying to move forward to be professional. Why do we need to wait two weeks to decide if the Board of Selectmen doesn't like that candidate. Well, if the department head thinks it's the best candidate and the town administrator thinks it's the best candidate, why do we need to wait for authorization from the Board of Selectmen? It's time to start giving the town administrator more authority so that we can run the day-to-day -day operations smoothly on a daily basis. Thank you. Select Board. This is just on the motion to amend. Still. This is on the motion to amend. and. Um, I'm very clear in the fact that I do not want this amendment to go through as we hire, and I, I, will, I will say Paul did a great job, that was what I was going to say more, but I do want people to know that we, we as selectmen, yes, we have to look at things and we have to understand things, but we, we appoint the town administrator. That's our job, is to appoint a town administrator. We have amazing department heads that come through. People are vetted for their positions and these job descriptions and they go up like any other job. You know, if you think about any other job, we're not just throwing Joe Schmo into a position. These people have to have qualifications and they have to be able to do the functions of the job through the job description that they have. And we have amazing department heads and we have committees that hire people. And then on top of that, the, the town administrator is there. I am I'm putting very much a, consideration on the department heads that we have hired and the town administrator that we have hired to do the job to do that function yes as selectmen i think it's great that i read off that a that a person is getting hired but i have done the due diligence to know that i believe that my department heads and my town administrator have made the best decision for that person to have that position because that's their job and i don't want to micromanage department heads and a, and a town administrator i definitely want to be informed as a selectman but I believe that our department heads and our town administrator need to have that uh, autonomy to be able to hire the best person for that position. So to put that into our hands and to be able to veto something where we have amazing department heads and a town administrator to do those things and committees to hire people, I don't believe that we should be putting that back in. Would anyone else like to be heard on the motion to amend? Hello, Susan Woodworth, 136 Grove Street, also your Director of Parks and Recreation for the past 24 years. 
In addition to um, what everybody has said here, as a department head, the other challenge by eliminating, by moving this motion for, or the amendment forward is productivity and efficiency. We continue to wait for all of those opportunities for different meetings. And again, as people have said, we hired somebody. We have a great board of selectmen who also is part of that process. It puts a great strain on all the departments and all the functions that all of you are accustomed to having. Sometimes if we wait, it could be more than a month, it could be six weeks. That puts a great strain on our department and all the functions that we have. So I vote, I would ask you to not approve this amendment. Thank you. Would anyone else like to, oh, yes? We did start with this in the initial language and the board as a, as a whole decided to take this language out because at the end of the day we're responsible for making sure that the town administrator is doing a good job. If something were to happen where someone was hired who shouldn't be, that's more of a performance issue that we would need to deal with. So just keep that in mind that this allows the town administrator to do his job and allows the department heads to hire and fill empty positions quickly and, and better. So. Anyone else on the motion to amend? Something new. New information. Come on down. Hi, Valerie Massard, One Schofield Road, and also a town planner. As a department head, I think it's really would diminish the capacity of the town in terms of competitiveness. It's very difficult in the hiring uh, field now to get an applicant and to further have them not know whether or not they'd be superseded during the appointment process is something that would um, render us even less effective in hiring. Anyone else with new information just to amend? Yes, sir. Jim Sewell, 51 Indian Pond Road. Um, I'm the uh, interim chairman of the Wage and Personnel Committee, and um, we just went through a big process on a uh, compensation study that the town got a, a compact grant for that took about, oh, six months to implement, especially with the help of the town administrator and also with the human resources director, Tina. So um, each one of these jobs has to go through a process of a job description. They get rated. Then they have what's called a JAQ, which is part of the compensation study. And then the job's ranked in terms of its pay grade. All that's done to facilitate what the town administrator has to do in terms of finding the right person. We give them the tools. So to further add the selectmen into the process after they've already created this outline, to me, doesn't make any sense. So I think we ought to just you know, entrust our town administrator to follow it. I agree with what the select board did, and I oppose the amendment. Thank you. Anyone else with new information as to the amendment only? I'm going to take a vote on all those in favor of amending Article 34? Article 34, say aye. All those opposed? No. Motion to amend fails. Would anyone like to be heard? I'm sorry? Yeah. Um, there's three people, so I'll let those three people speak as to the original article, um, and then we'll take a vote. Okay, Elaine Fiore, 60 Cold Street. I just want to make, uh, that this is a very comprehensive article. It's in depth. There's a lot to digest. And to Mr. Gallagher's point, this is a charter. This is changing the governmental structure of the town of Kingston. And that's evident by the motion that says, submit a whole room petition to the general court for special legislation to establish the duties, etc. This is special legislation which overrides mass general law in some instances. There's a lot of shalls in this, this packet. Uh, for example, shall supervise and direct the administration of all departments, agencies, etc. But we have enterprise funds. And the responsibility of water and sewer commission is, in addition to Board of Health and the assessors, we have duties inherent to mass general law that this, because it says shall, would override. Again, we have um, the, the C, town administrator shall fix the compensation of all town employees, etc., but not limited to, including but not limited to the wage and personnel bylaw and committee. There's more questions than not. Does that mean the 
town administrator would set salaries outside of wage and personnel bylaw. Then we get to G, the town administrator shall be responsible for maintenance and repair of all town buildings and facilities. What does that mean to the enterprise funds? There's no mention in here of excluding enterprise funds. It excludes the fire chief and the police chief, but not the enterprise funds. And we can go on with J, the town administrator shall negotiate contracts. Contracts are typically negotiated by those departments affected with the contract, vetted by council, vetted by accounting for funds, and then um, discussed with the town administrator. Um, town administrator, okay, town administrator shall be responsible for purchasing all supplies and material. Is that as the chief procurement officer? Or does that mean the daily operations of, again, the enterprise funds? Uh, M. Subject to applicable law, the town administrator may at any time inquire into the conduct of office of any officer employee. That's just generally speaking. I don't understand what that means. P, the town administrator shall publish on the town's websites all vacancies, et cetera, um, remo review and recommend candidates for all appointments um, to be made by the town administrator, board of selectmen, or moderator. Again, the enterprise funds by Mass General Law have their own uh, responsibilities. And uh, the fourth one, acting town administrator, it says the town administrator shall designate a qualified town administrator. We have an assistant town administrator. If there's any language, I think it should say it, def it goes to the assistant town administrator. So there's a lot of questions on how the future operation of enterprise funds will be managed. I think this is a lot to digest. Having all said all of that, I would like to make a motion to table this, to have further discussion on what the impact of this is to the other uh, other uh, departments in town that shall encompasses. Second. 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 Okay. Okay. That's an appropriate motion. Can I respond to that before you take a vote on it? Some of the I can see if it's debatable. No? Okay. Non-debatable, non-debatable. Non okay. non so non this, this motion's not debatable. So um, it has a second. It requires a two-thirds um, to table this. Um, so we wouldn't vote on it. It would just, in essence, it's almost like a no vote, but it, in essence, we're just not going to vote on it um, yeah. if it passes. So we need two thirds, and this article will not be voted on at town meeting today. Can you define what yes vote is? If you vote, so a two thirds vote will table it. So yes. all those in favor would say aye to table it. If you're opposed, the motion will go forward as printed. So all those in favor of tabling as amended, um, Article 34, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. I, I'm going to call that a two-thirds majority with minimal opposition, and Article 34 is, in essence, tabled. Under construction. Thirty-seven, I believe. Yes. Just state your name for the record. Sure. And your address. Megan Hickey, 42 Winthrop Street. Move the town vote to amend its town general bylaws by adding chapter 26 as printed as an attachment to the warrant. Nope, sorry, that's the wrong one. Move the town vote to amend chapter 13 of the town's bylaws, wetland protection bylaw, by making changes as printed in the attachment to the warrant. Can I address something while I'm up here? You can address the article. Can I address the lies that were printed about it? Okay, hold on, I'll address that. Um, when we showed up here today, there was a handout, um, vote no on articles 37 and 38, they go too far. That wasn't sent prior, anything on it is one person's opinion, it's not the opinion of the Board of Selectmen, it's not the opinion of the Finance Committee, it's not the opinion of anybody but 
the person, non-resident, who showed up and handed this out. Um, so you can take it for whatever you want out of it. Um, people show up and they, and they hand things out. It wasn't under scrutiny of anyone from the town. It was provided today. So you can take whatever information you want from that or as little information you want from that. I've addressed it. Can I make a personal point about it? That this is now a second time that our articles have been of? No, you can address the article. Just address the article. If there's response, you can, you can answer. No, no. Uh, can I invite Matt to address the article? I moved it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We have a second. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. I'll put you in queue if you want further, Megan. Yeah, uh, Matt Pinella, conservation agent. Uh, so I think everybody knows that our local wetlands protection bylaw is more protective than the state wetlands protection act. Um, and that's important when we review projects in town. Unfortunately, can you get closer to the Can't microphone? hear me? Sorry, I'll crouch down. Um, I think everybody knows that the State Wetlands Protection Act is less protective than our local bylaw. We have a good local wetlands protection bylaw in town, but upon starting this job roughly two years ago, I realized it was not without errors. Um, it's a little bit confusing. It has some parts that weren't uh, correct and was not the easiest thing to implement for ourselves or for the public or people looking to apply. So we've been working for, at this point, just about two years on revisions. Uh, and the way that process went was we used the template created by the Mass Association of Conservation Commissioners as a starting point because uh, they have some lawyers that put together a really good document that provides really good protection for the local wetlands, but it's really easy to understand, it's easy to implement. So that was our starting point. And from there, we added in some of the language that we already had in our bylaw so that there were not a lot of major changes um, there. Some of the additions that this new bylaw provides is it adds some just small sections of language that make it, uh, decisions that the commission makes more defensible, uh, discusses things like cumulative impacts. Um, one of the important things it does, and I think some people will remember that we've had a few coastal uh, development projects come through lately, and there was big decision on whether the commission could discuss the projected impacts of climate change and sea level rise. Um, this bylaw defines that the commission can take research-based climate and sea level rise predictions into account during permit review, which I think everyone should care about. There's a lot of, you know, potential coastal issues in town that we should be thinking about before approving developments. Uh, one of the other things it does, it extends abutter notifications from 100 feet to 300 feet, uh, which again, I don't think will make the filing process for any one person too onerous. It's not gonna raise the costs terribly, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna make sure if there's a project going in near your house, you're gonna find out about it. One of the biggest things we heard so I'm going to stop for a minute if you're not a resident of the town you need to leave Wait. unless you were pre-approved to be down here thank you I'm sorry for the interruption no worries um, so one of the things that that does uh, we had a lot of feedback from Kingston residents when we do have certain filings that they didn't get notified because the abutter notification was only 100 feet um, so again uh, that would extend to 300 feet, make it more likely that you would hear about a project near you, less surprises for residents. Um, one of the other things it does, it extends jurisdiction by 100 feet in cases where more than 10 feet of fill or excavation is proposed. Uh, and the idea behind that, it provides additional protection for wetlands when something like a large scale earth removal or fill project is proposed. And again, I don't find that that over-regulates those projects, what it does is it provides, it, it sort of ties up a loophole that allows, you know, a project that will likely impact wetlands to, you know, have a little bit more of a buffer there, or at least a little bit more oversight. So uh, the gist of this is that the Conservation Commission is listening. We've had a lot of feedback from residents over the last couple of years about the development process um, and about how the process works and what the commission, you know, can and can't do when they're reviewing projects and we find that this amendment is not something that's going to make major changes to the average Kingston resident. Um, all it's going to do is provide better protection for our wetlands and it's going to make it easier for my office, the Conservation Commission, and anybody who's filing for a wetlands permit uh, to understand what they're doing. I'll open it up for debate.
Yes. Uh, Peter Opachinski, 50 Old Sawmill Road, been a resident of Kingston for better part of 50 years. And my feeling on this article is that it just goes a little bit too far. You're going to discourage uh, new business um, from coming into Kingston. Um, and if you don't have new development and new growth, it's going to mean higher taxes for everybody in town. And I think this article is going to um, basically say Kingston is, is closed for business. Um, part of the, um, the rural character um, and attraction to Kingston, I think, is the number of cranberry bogs that we have in town. And this article would make it very difficult for cranberry growers to either expand their farms, um, build new bogs, uh, renovate bogs, um, expand water holes when there's um, drought issues like we had, especially last summer. And I think the unfairness of this article, it's, it's really geared towards one particular landowner. And it's backed by um, a lot of out-of-towners um, with deep pockets. Um, so if you're not allowed to, say, develop a cranberry bog and you have a certain acreage of undeveloped land in, in Kingston, what are the, the landowner's options? And with, if you regulate them so much, um, one way around it is to go with a 40B development. It's, um, it, it bypasses a lot of the, the rules and regulations that would be in place in Kingston. Um, and I don't think that's what anybody in this room would really want to see, is someone that has a large tract of land, for some reason can't put a, a cranberry bog or, or something like that with a, a, a good use that's beneficial to the town. And um, you get a 40B cram down your throat that impacts the schools, the town services. Um, it's just not what we want in town. So I think the rules and regulations that have been in, in place in Kingston for years have, have worked well. Um, you've got board oversight, you've got the select board, you've got the planning board, conservation commission, and no one can just go in and start digging material to build a cranberry bog without a certain level of approvals. You've got DEP oversight. 30 seconds. Uh, um, so my feeling is that this is just uh, an over-regulation that's going to um, basically hurt business coming into town and I think it will impact everybody's taxes eventually if this article passes. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to address that? Okay. Just to speak to the cranberry side of that, um, the cranberry industry and agriculture in general have pretty extensive exemptions with the Wetlands Protection Act uh, and with our local bylaws. Um, so I don't expect that this is something that's going to prevent cranberry growers from, from going about their business. Um, and as far as this being something that's backed or sourced by wealthy out-of-towners, I will say I'm an out-of-towner. I'm a resident of North Carver. I'm not wealthy. I am a town employee uh, who cares very much about the town of Kingston now because this is my professional integrity at stake is how I and my board handle wetlands protection in town. So thank you. Yes. Julianne Nemus Walsh, 27A Rocky Nook Ave. Thank you for explaining that to us. But I do have a question, it's very simple. I just need you to explain to me for my own educational purposes, is what does incremental activities, significant or cumulative effect mean? There's a few different ways of looking at that. One of those ways is that an activity that you're doing in small increments on your property over time will add up to have a detrimental effect on the wetland resource areas. Another thought on that is looking at an area and looking at, so let's say one person puts a pool in, there's an effect there. But let's say now two people put a pool in, three people, now 10 people put a pool in, and all of them have a discharge that's flowing towards wetlands. I'm just using pools as an example off the top of my head. It's the commission being able to look at the potential additive effects of development in that area to that particular wetland. And would this pertain to residential and commercial at the same level, or would there be different rules for each? Everything in the bylaw essentially is the same, whether you're a homeowner or uh, commercial or a large-scale developer. 
um, the differences would come typically in the types of projects. So homeowners doing a small project on their property, we have what's called the administrative review process, which is a simple, cheap way to get projects permitted without having to go through, you know, filing an NOI or an RDA. Um, so I would say typically homeowner projects go through either that or the RDA process. Um, in some cases, they are required to fill a complete NOI, which is a lot more time consuming and expensive. So the, when you described incremental, is, is that the same as c the cumulative effect? Yes, I would say that it's, it's close anyways, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yes. Good morning, Luann McAuliffe, 18 Waterview Lane. My question is, what changes will have occurred on the existing property owners who own the wetlands, or land adjacent to wetlands, um, and their rights to do what they wish with their own property? How is this gonna affect the um, residents of Kingston who are close to the wetlands throughout the town? It's, again, my opinion, but my understanding from the way that we've gone about this is that it's not very much. Um, the commission, the reason for the, ad the additive language for things like cumulative impacts, the commission is already using those terms in their decisions, what this does, it gives more legal standing to when somebody goes and says, well, I'm gonna take that to court and try to overturn your decision if we didn't have something specifically in the bylaw as opposed to the regulations, then we run the risk of losing that, that argument. So I think for the average homeowner, again, I don't think so. I don't think that this increases, you know, the commission's ability to tell you, no, you can't do anything with your property at all. We already have, pretty strong language in the bylaws that allow the commission oversight of things like that. Um, but again, the commission isn't interested in over-regulating. We have enough to do as it is, and people do have their property rights. So we stick pretty closely to what we have for bylaw and regulations whenever we see a filing. Thank you. I just want to make sure government isn't trying to control a group again. <laughs> that, that's not the idea, anyways. Yes. Hi. Um, Megan Hickey, 42 Winthrop Street. Uh, I also sit on the Conservation Commission and I also sit on the Open Space Committee. This is a way for our town to better protect the residents and their concerns. It's a way that we have worked through as a board. We've listened to you guys, we've listened to the people that come in front of us with wetlands issues. And this is a way to make it clearer for you guys and for us a way to protect our wetlands, to protect our resources. We're also adding in a butter notification that is a huge complaint of everybody in this town that everyone says that they don't know what's going on. By increasing this from 100 to 300 feet, it allows you to know what's going on in your own neighborhood, maybe a street over. This is not an attack on any person, any property owner, anything like that. The, we are all in town, we're all residents on that board. We're not out of towners. We certainly don't have deep pockets. We're not gonna make any money off of this. The town's not gonna make any money off of this. In the long run, it's just to better secure our natural resources, the aesthetic of our town, our wetlands, our woodlands, and anything adjacent to those. Thank you. Thank you. Drew, you can make a clarification. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just for clarification, because I, I don't know sometimes if I explain things very well, where I talk about increasing the abutter notification distance from 100 to 300 feet, that's simply somebody who's filing needs to let you know within if you live within 300 feet of their property line. When I talk about the additional 100 feet of jurisdiction for cases where more than 10 feet of fill will be removed or added, that's simple jurisdiction that simply means that you need to file. This does not in any way extend any buffer zones or any performance standards. So I just want that to be clear that we're talking about more communication so the public can know when a project's gonna go in near them and extended jurisdiction in very what I expect to be very seldom cases where more than 10 feet of fill will be added or removed. And again, in those cases, there are no additional performance standards there. It's simply saying that then that project will need review, therefore making sure that that project will follow the guidelines of protecting the wetlands on site. 
Bob Koska, 55 South Street, uh, currently a water commissioner. I'm speaking on behalf of myself because the board has not met and discussed this and voted on it. Um, one of the single most important resources we have in the town of Kingston is our groundwater. All of your water that you get through your faucets comes through groundwater. Wetlands impact groundwater significantly. Should there be pollution in wetlands, it's going to eventually get into the groundwater, and that beautiful water that we have is going to be polluted. Any efforts to try to protect um, standing water also supports the, the well water. Any efforts to keep um, contaminants out of our water system, we will, I will support, and I assume the board will too. Yep. Yes, sir. Mr. Pinella, is that your name? You got it. Oh, uh, so Brad Randall, 10 Grace Beach Road. Just for clarification, all this does, because I just read it and make sure we're not missing anything, it adds a notification zone, 200 feet, makes it 300. So it's just notifying, and then it adds definitions. That's it, right? I don't want to say that. It's not okay. that simple, because I don't all want right. to misspeak. What okay. we did was we had an existing bylaw. We took the MACC model bylaw, which puts all the chapters in completely different order, and in my opinion, makes it much more understandable and easier to implement and understand. Um, from there, I took the bulk of the language that was in our existing wetlands protection bylaw and moved it into that format so that we weren't losing any protections, we weren't making any major changes in the protections or the process. Simply putting it in a different order so that it was easier to understand and implement. From that point, some of the definitions were minor changes. There were additions of minor language changes, like I stated, things like cumulative impacts. Um, there were a few other small terms here or there. Um, the, the biggest changes to it were the ones that I um, spelled out, which were the change in the abutter notification distance, the allowance for the commission to take research-based climate and sea level rise predictions into account during permit review, and the extension of jurisdiction by 100 feet in cases where more than 10 feet of fill or excavation is proposed. Those are the only major changes. Okay, I th well thank you. Uh, this is very well done. And you know, it, it seems like you're someone that really cares. So I thank you for doing this. And you know, you have to wonder why someone would come up and oppose notification increase for activity near wetlands, uh, and then talk about cranberry bog prevention. No, that is not realistic at all. Nobody is preventing cranberry bogs. Uh, this is just to let you know when somebody is messing with your streams and your lakes so that you can go to meetings and have input. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Buzz Artiano, 11 Clearing Farm Road. I'm also a conservation member. Uh, for nine years on and off. Uh, this was uh, debated 1Z in buzz, please, not two. Um, this was debated heavily with the board. We did make some minor rev revisions. Um, I'm a developer. I have been a developer my entire life. I am comfortable with this language. Um, I spent a lot of time researching, and we spent a lot of talking about it as a board. I'm comfortable that this does not impact normal development and or someone that has an existing house uh, to be able to do what they want. Thank you. All right, we got one approach maybe? Possibly? Yes. Uh, Jim Franklin, 53 Winthrop Street. I volunteer as um, vice chair of the Conservation Commission and the chairman of the Open Space Committee. Um, just to piggyback off what Buzz said, Buzz is a, a member of the Conservation Commission um, as well. He's a, he's a developer. Uh, I am building consultant. Uh, I work in construction every single day of my life. I set up projects. I manage projects. I can tell you as somebody who sets up and manages projects that the integrity of the documents that are put in for front of you going into the project equals the integrity of the project coming out of the um, the, the document process, right? Garbage in, garbage out, right? So when we get down to, you know, the brass tacks of what this is doing is where Matt did a really good job at just cleaning up some language um, and addressing some of the 
widespread complaints that we've received as a board uh, through the past whatever years that I've been on this board. So I think this is an important one to, to, to move forward with. Um, it, it, it's not an expansion of what we already have. It's just something that cleans it up so that the people who volunteer and put hours and hours of just uh, reviewing these uh, submissions when they come through, uh, many times incomplete, uh, it puts, puts a little bit more forethought into the process going in so that we can maybe do a better job at enforcing the bylaw that you guys all put in a long time ago and, and uh, within the regulations that you were implemented long before any of us got here. So I, I would ask that you guys support this article. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Jim Sewell, 51 Indian Pond Road. Um, I'm one of those people that this uh, uh, increase from 300 feet would affect. Um, I live on Russell Pond, and there's a big project in Sylvia Pond in the conservation area, removal of the dam. And um, obviously the five people in our pond were afraid of water levels because Russell Pond flows into Sylvia Pond. And Sylvia Pond is going to be uh, lowered by about 40%. So I didn't find out about it except through, at that time, the Kingston Reporter. And um, I had to go to the Conservation Commission. I had to go to the DEP. I had to go to the Army Corps of Engineers. I had to spend $250 to file a uh, hearing notice. And then I had to notify all my abutters to let them know that this was happening. That and if this was in place, we would have gotten an official notice, and we would have been ahead of the curve. In the end, we lost, okay? We could not get the Conservation Commission to look at our point, nor DEP, nor um, Army Corps of Engineers. But the point was, at least we had the ability to get in the fight. And um, I'm in favor of this language. Um, I'm not always in favor of some of the rulings, but I'm definitely in favor of this language <laughs> for the abutting. Thank you. All right, thank you. See, seeing no one, um, no one else at the microphones, I'm going to move this to a vote. All those in favor of Article 37 say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries with minimal opposition. 38. Megan Hickey, Winthrop Street. Move the town vote to amend its town's general bylaws by adding chapter 26 as printed as an attachment to the warrant. Okay. Who's up for the description on this? Come on back. Again, Matt Pinella, conservation agent. Uh, I think Val Massard, town planner, will have something to say to this as well. Um, again, just a brief background on this, um, I'd like to come right out and state that this is not something that we put together based on any one property. Um, this is something that since I started here, I've been discussing with uh, Jason Silva, the town's uh, zoning enforcement officer and development coordinator, as well as Val since she started here. And again, sim similar to the wetlands revisions, this is something that was put together out of you know, a perceived need based on the existing town regulations and bylaws, as well as extensive public input. Um, again, we're listening when people say that they want Kingston to stay green, they like the rural character and all of these different things. So we recognize that there was some sort of a disconnect between all of our permitting processes that does not stop somebody from clear cutting, bulldozing, you know, on a large scale area without permits. So we chose to fill that gap because, again, I think the people of Kingston deserve to have fresh air and, you know, good ecology, good drinking water for, you know, the long term. Um, this does not prevent somebody from developing their property. We put a lot of effort between, you know, several town departments and boards in making sure that this does not affect the average homeowner and it does not make the standard development process more onerous. Uh, we had several builders 
giving impact, giving input on this bylaw. We have a three-tiered process for, you know, for this essentially, where if you already have a permit from conservation, planning board, or zoning, you do not need any additional permitting. If you already have a permit from the building department, board of health, or another town board other than the three I just described, it would go through an administrative review process, very similar to what I described for our wetlands bylaw. A quick, simple review by town staff. If town staff discovers during the administrative review process that that is something that should not go through administrative review because there are issues there, then it would go through um, site, site plan review by the planning board. Um, for other projects on undeveloped land or for larger projects over, I believe, 15,000 square feet um, on developed lands, you would need a special permit from the planning board. So again, this is just a way to make sure that development goes through in a way that's the most beneficial for the town of Kingston, maintaining tree cover, maintaining good ecology. It does not make it so that you can't develop your parcel. It does not make it so that you can't put something in your backyard. It simply adds another check to make sure that the development process goes through in a way that isn't unnecessarily destructive and we don't end up with lots that are sitting vacant after being essentially raised um, and then sitting there waiting for the permitting process. I, I have a question, not that I'm for or against this, I'm not voting, but what size parcel of land does this cover? If I can respond, it's, it's based on the proposed use um, and also square footage. It's not necessarily related to the size of the parcel. It's not to a, a quarter acre? I thought I read somewhere that, so I just want to make sure if we, what, what, are we talking acres? I just, I there, okay, yeah, I'll let Matt. Yeah, so again, um, different, different steps, so it depends. So small projects, uh, which we consider to be greater than 15,000 square feet on a developed lot, or projects that are within 15 feet of a property line or on slopes exceeding 25%, or projects already being permitted by departments or boards other than planning, zoning, or conservation, would have a simple administrative review by town staff. If staff find problems, they go to site plan review. Um, so essentially, it's, it's set over a certain size. So, you know, if you're a homeowner and you're going to cut an area of forest greater than 15,000 square feet, which is roughly, I don't know, what is that? A third quarter, of an acre? Quarter to a third of an acre, um, then you would need that administrative review process. Um, or if it's within a certain distance, 15 feet of the property line or on a steep slope, because again, your actions in those cases are going to affect your neighbors or whatever's downslope of you. Um, Outside of that, for you know, unpermitted clearing of undeveloped lots, there's no site, uh, there's no size requirement on that, and that's a site alteration special special permit. But again, that's insinuating that you don't have any permits to do any of that work already. If you did have a building permit, or if you already had a permit for whatever work you're doing there, then that would be site plan review by the planning board, which is again a simpler process. Just to clarify, I'm not trying to sway one way or the left. I just wanted to make sure everyone knew the, the land mass we were talking about here. Go ahead, ma'am. I'll just, if I may add to what Matt was pointing out, administrative review is also appealable to the planning board. So if you're not happy with staff's recommendations on something, you can go see the planning board as a built-in. Uh, we are attempting here to manage situations. For example, if somebody's... Uh, doing extensive filling or, or changing their landscape of their property where it could affect their neighbor uh, with storm drainage, we're able to look at that and just make sure that we're able to um, prevent some of the situations that I've seen in other communities where uh, storm water moves around and becomes a problem between neighbors when it could have been caught during the building permits or those kinds of situations and addressed during that process rather than becoming a neighbor to neighbor problem. So it's, it's something where we're trying to um, keep this simple, but also build in the, uh, the knowledge and the, the ability to work with the, a builder or developer on coming up with a plan that will address that issue as well. Just yeah, oh, go ahead. We're slightly ahead of schedule. And just one quick thing I should have mentioned, there are extensive exemptions to this um, all listed out in Section 5, um, you know, including routine maintenance of vegetation, um, 
you know, construction and maintenance of public and private streets and utilities, work conducted in accordance with a valid earth removal permit issued by the town of Kingston, um, use, maintenance, or improvement of agricultural activities in existence at the time this bylaw is adopted, work conducted in accordance with an approved NRCS agricultural plan, and they go on from there. So this isn't, this isn't something that I expect to be, you know, something that will become problematic for, for residents of Kingston. This is something that will help again, you know, maintain forest cover, maintain clean water through reduction of stormwater flow off of sites, things like that. Seeing no one at the microphones, I can, uh, let's move this to a vote. All those in favor of, uh, I'm sorry, up. Uh. Dana Dupree, 8 Aaron Path. Move to the town to vote to amend town's general bylaws by adding chapter 26. What does chapter 26 state? It's a brand new uh, bylaw. So this, th what, we're, what we're proposing, which is at the end of the uh, warrant handout, page 73 would be the new chapter 26. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Hi, uh, Jim Franklin, 53 Winthrop Street. Um, again, speaking for myself, the. The intent of this bylaw was basically to respond to some situations that had, had come up where previous people in town or, or developers that just basically came in and started clear cutting parcels that were under development um, with the understanding that it, it's easy to just go into something and say that you didn't know how to do something, right? There was no, nothing to keep them in line with what the, the regulations were. There was no pre-approval step to go into a wetland resource area and um, just start you know, cutting trees that you wanted to clear for a vista, right? So from that perspective, there's been these things that people in the town have been fighting against for a very long time. The intent of this, I think, was to achieve some type of process that should be complete, that doesn't add regulation to any of the, uh, any of the processes unless there's already an existing regulation that, that needs to be reviewed, right? So if you have a parcel and, and it's, you say you decide you want to put fruit, tree, fruit trees up, you want to clear some trees for that, if you're underneath uh, 15,000 square feet, which is probably twice the size of this room, um, then you would have to go down and get an administrative review, right? If you're outside of jurisdiction areas, there's, there's no extra steps beyond that except all right, you, is there slope issues where you're going to be, you know, just dis, dis, destroying all the soil, sta sto, soil stabilization? And is, is this going to create a problem? And if it is, then, then we should talk about it, make sure the proper safeguards are in place. So this isn't, you know, a real huge expansion on anything. It's, it's, it's a tool that the building uh, commissioner can use just to prevent clear cutting, just things that haven't been permitted, right? We want everything to go through the permit. You know, I think the town boards are very good at, you know, bringing projects through and, and you know, certainly I can say our board is typically um, 30 majority. We're on the, uh, the unanimous decision side when we, when we permit a project because we spend the time that we need to do. So this just gives one more tool just to make sure that we're, everybody's going through the process. So I would, I would vote in favor of this. I'll now take a vote. All those, hold on, hold on, hold on. All those in, you can clap by voting. Uh, all those in favor of Article 38, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Opposed. 38 passes with minimal opposition. On to 39. Okay, Article 39. We're getting there. Uh, amend. To, uh, to General Bylaws, Chapter 27, Naming of Town Property by, well, by Law. Motion. Move the town vote to amend its General Bylaws by adding Chapter 27, Naming of Town Property, as printed in the warrant. I can do the description. Uh, the purpose of this article is to establish a bylaw for the naming of town-owned buildings. Would anyone like to be heard on this? Then I don't really want to explain it, but I don't have take to. Take a vote. 
Article 39 is a majority vote favorable by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to 0. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, no opposition. Thank you. 40. Megan, we're going to bring you a chair down here next year. <laughs> Do you like to read in public? Because I don't. <laughs> Megan Hickey, Winthrop Street. Uh, move the town vote to transfer the town owned property identified in the warrant to the care and custody of the Conservation Commission for conservation purposes and, to, and further to remove the following language from the 2014 town meeting vote referencing parcel 095002000. 0950300 and 0950040000 quote not to include portions of the prior three lots south of Monks Hill Road unquote in the following language from the 2014 meeting vote referencing parcels 0940030000 0940030000 and 0940500. Nope, I just read that twice. I apologize. Okay. Not to include any portions of a parking area, Smelt Pond Beach, or Scout Camp, and to include any portion of the developed area around the old Scout Camp building off Monks Hill Road. As written in the warrant. <laughs> Anyone like to be heard on this? This requires a two-thirds vote. Yeah, I, I have a question. Yes. So, I don't know if this is for Megan or for the assessors, Matt. Um, I guess I'm trying to follow what the, the intent of this article, but we have 19 parcels listed here tax title parcels and some non-tax title. Have we confirmed that the town is in fact the owner of all of these parcels? Because I, out of the parcel list, um, there was six of them that I looked up that did not list the town of Kingston as the current owner. To clarify, you're talking about the tax title yeah. parcels? I. I can't answer that. I would say that if that is the case and those parcels are not actually in tax title, then I would ask council that I would imagine those ones just don't go through. Well, so even if they're in tax title, it doesn't mean that the town of Kingston owns them. And so have we received a judgment on all of these? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, all right. The parcels that I had identified is 32, 6, 34, 88, 34, 89, 34, 90. Yeah. All the 34s over on Clifton. 3873 and 423. And so when I look in the assessor's um, online database, they did not show that as the town of Kingston being the owner. So they could be in tax title, but if we haven't received a judgment and foreclosed on them and we don't have current ownership, how, how can we be transferring or taking any action? So that's just my question. Carl? But then we'll defer to council. Carl Pike, Shore Drive. When I was the treasurer last year, I attempted to do an auction of these types of town-owned properties. And we, in fact, did validate that every one of these uh, items were our own by the town. Some going back even before our current system was in accounting and um, assessing was uh, put together so that I am 99.9% .9 sure that all of these articles are in fact owned by the town. In fact, when I first saw this article, I went back to our uh, potential auction records and verified that yes, every one of them was in there. Council? No, it's not there. Oh, uh, so I will say that oftentimes the updating of the computer system is a little bit delayed. So if you were to sell your house today um, and record the deed, the very next day it doesn't 
get recorded on the website, so that could be part of the problem. I, I'm not your tax title lawyer, so I didn't um, undertake any of these transactions, but in, for a tax title, uh, Mary's 100% right. You need to wait for a final judgment. Um, I presume that Carl's representation is accurate, but I can't verify it one way or the other, but it could simply be a delay in that um, recording coming back to the town and being inputted into the system. I guess the question is, if, the, if there isn't a judgment and we pass this now, what happens? It wouldn't be valid for those, parcels. for those parcels, for those parcels. Just the parcels we don't have a judgment on, correct? Right, exactly right. So you have to have title to property in order to convey it. So to the extent that that portion um, was not validly held by the town, it would be ineffective. Yes. Mark Wittaboni, uh, 15 Old Orchard Lane. Um, my question on the, these properties, I was on the Open Space Committee four years. Um, we spent a lot of time working on uh, separating municipal parcels from uh, conservation and the recreational area that was designated um, around the Smelt Pond area for possible uses, uh, boating and uh, sailing. The article, um, once we put these properties in conservation, I'd like council to address the requirement under Chapter 97, I believe, where we require state legislature to remove them from our conservation jurisdiction. And if, if she could answer that question, I'm concerned that by placing all these parcels in conservation, we then restrict them. And if the town needs to put a water tank someplace or move forward uh, with other plans for municipal use, they would be uh, locked up. So that's true. So once it becomes conservation property, it's protected by Article 97, which is a constitutional provision. And essentially, the process to remove and use those parcels for development, non-conservation um, uses, you would come to town meeting, file special legislation. That special legislation gets submitted to the legislature for approval, but prior to that, it gets submitted to the EOEA, um, which is a division of the state. And what they tend to require is equal acreage coming out with a donation back into. So if you're taking one acre out of conservation, you have to find another parcel of equal size and replace that conservation land because this protection is meant to um, uh, protect air, water, um, open space, all of those um, uses which the government decided was an important resource that they didn't want undermined. Do you have a follow-up question, sir? I would like to, to recommend that we, uh, this isn't really a, a well vetted decision. I think we should have a public hearing and discuss whether we, as a town, need to actually use these parcels for other uses. I think we have a lot of land in Kingston that is off the tax rolls that we've got dedicated. I think that's important for the character of Kingston. But this on the is, other this, hand, this is the public hearing. we need these for um, municipal use. We're going to be asked to come back here and buy more land for municipal use because we don't have access to these properties. Thank you. Thank you. Response? I'd like to thank Mr. Guidaboni and anybody else who was on the Open Space Committee that dealt with uh, all these parcels in the past. Um, I'll start by saying that in those particular cases that, that he's speaking of, they're only portions of parcels. The rest of the parcels were already put into conservation. And uh, to my knowledge, they were done that was done for several reasons, one of which the area in question was called poor habitat, poor quality habitat, which is, since I've been here, I've determined to be 100% untrue. Um, that area is incredibly important habitat, being the northern terminus of the Atlantic Coastal Pine Barrens. Um, a, lot of, a lot of rare species, it's, a, it's really, really important quality habitat. In addition to that, that's the part of town primarily that's we are really doing a great job filtering groundwater. Um, all of the sand deposits that are underneath the natural soils and the natural forest there do a great job 
of getting stormwater back into the ground, filtered, ready for drinking water again. Um, as far as the recreation side of it, there was an area there that was left for the purposes that Mr. Guidaboni mentioned. Um, that was almost 10 years ago. Nothing has happened in that area. I have checked with the Rec Commission. The Rec Commission and the Rec Department determined that they were not likely to do any of those types of activities there, and more so that a lot of the activities they would want to do there would fall right in line with conservation use. Um, any passive recreation is allowable on conservation land, so if they want to do kayaking tours or classes or hikes, things like that, a lot of those things can be done anyways with no approval from the Conservation Commission. The only area that we took, that we left outside of conservation control is the area around the old Boy Scout camp where there is still a building there that the Scouts like to use from time to time. Uh, for the purpose that if that ever needed to be rebuilt, they didn't have to come before conservation for that. Um, I had one thought and I just lost it. You'll have another chance. Happens. I'll take a question while you think that. Sure. Hi, Pine de Bois, um, 93 Elm Street. Used to be on the Conservation Commission for 10 years in the Open Space Committee formation as well as the Land Stewardship Committee. And as I recall, we had recommended all those parcels in Camp Nikon to be part of conservation and it was they were later stripped for the purpose of trying to do this heavy recreational um, project. So I, I'm completely in support of this and I also um, did go through every one of those parcels last night on the GIS and it all said Town of Kingston. So I don't know, you know, Mary, whether, you know, my computer is different than yours, but I, I don't think that's a reason to kick them off. And I, and I would very much support um, uh, the work that is being done here because, as uh, was said previously, it does support your groundwater. It does support everything that's important to you in this town, and there's no reason to, <laughs> we've talked about it for decades and that it should be um, protected to the degree that we possibly can and this is a great opportunity to do so. Thank and you. I know that the town department heads have talked about it a lot so if he's got it on the agenda it's good to go. And I just want to be super clear so you understand what I said. I, I agree 100% with Matt that passive recreation would not require any sort of legislation. That would be permitted in a conservation area. I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I said. Board. Um, hi, Sheila Vaughn, 7 Frank Street. Um, I just want to um, also, I don't think we're getting so much new information, but I would like to say that I, on my, on my past time, listened to the Conservation Commission meetings, um, and so they do a very good job of vetting these. And um, to say that I, we need more information, and I believe that if you wanted to listen to this, you would go to the Conservation meetings. They're online. They are recorded. I have listened to this, and I, I have made my informed decision. I know sometimes it's hard to do that, but this is why we have these commissions, and this is why we have these people that are, are understanding of what we do. And I think it's important that this is a 5-0 vote from the Conservation Commission. And I think it's very important to go to their meetings and listen to their meetings. They are recorded. You can go online afterwards. But I listen to their meetings, and I, I really feel like they've done a very good job of vetting this and understanding this. So I'm in favor of this, to let this go through. Thank you. Yes. Jim Sewell, 51 Indian Pond. Thanks, Sheila. Just a question, Matt. Is any of the uh, parcels going to have a financial impact in order to get them in the, say, Conservation Commission uh, for the town? In other words, will he have to spend any money uh, in the town to get these to be put into the uses you're describing? I was just about to come out here and say something about no cost to the town, but I should defer to Carol or Carl because I've never done the tax title process before. So I know there are steps that we have to take. I don't know um, if there's going to be a, a large cost to that. Can anybody then it, more the, qualified speak to that? Well, it's not, Matt, it sounds like it'll be minimal. If that's, anything, I mean. That's my expectation, but I'll yeah. defer to um, How about how much land is it, roughly? I should have had that prepared here today. I, I wrote down that it was roughly 50 acres of Pine Barrens protections, but that's focused primarily on the area around Camp Nikon. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the parcels, 
I want to say are mostly smaller in size. So I don't have I don't have an exact number for you on that. I apologize. Yes. Go ahead, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Carol McCoy, uh, finance director. Uh, no, there is no cost. There's no recording at the registry of deeds, as far as I'm aware. You might have to record a conservation restriction, but that's like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something. Okay. Oh, 77. <laughs> Hello. Uh, that would be the only cost is something recorded at the registry of deeds. Okay. Um, Matt, how about um, I see your budget only going up about 5.5%, adding an additional 50 acres. How about maintenance? Um, you know, uh, I know I was a past member of the finance committee and I remember some of those budgets and how little money is there, but uh, I'm just curious with adding all this land to the uh, whole process, are we prepared to take care of it? Short answer is yes, we're prepared and there should not be an increase in cost based on what we're taking in here. Um, our budget for land management is very, very small um, and I do have plans on increasing that slightly over time to make sure that we can keep up with the expectations of the people in Kingston for the, how their properties look. But I'll say that my standpoint on that is that these are conservation properties. They're there for passive use. They're there for ecology. They're there for air to breathe and water to drink and all of those reasons. So in my opinion, they don't need a lot of maintenance. They don't need to look like parks. They don't need to be perfect. Um, we do have a CPC article from last year that we're working on to update the signage, a little bit of fencing, make the properties more inviting, make sure people know about them and use them. Um, so I, again, I don't expect that this is gonna increase our budget in a meaningful way. We already manage a lot of land for a little bit of money, um, and we rely pretty heavily on volunteers to do that, so. Thank you. Can See, I just quickly speak to my lost thought from before? Find your thought, <laughs> let us have it. Um, focusing for a second just on the Camp Nikon area, when I started here two years ago, it was in really poor condition. Um, it had been owned by the town for nearly 50 years under General Municipal. The portions that were transferred to conservation were transferred in 2014, uh, but there was still not gated, no signage, very few people using it for passive recreation, a lot of people using it with trucks, Jeeps, ATVs, dirt bikes, bonfires, partying, contractors dumping things in the woods. In the past two years, the Conservation Commission and volunteers has worked tirelessly to reverse those trends to the end that now and we continue to improve, but at this point now, we have a lot of people out there walking dogs, walking with their kids. We have a lot of hunters there in the fall. We have people there on their bicycles. Like, this area is turning into what I envisioned it as, which is the gem of Kingston. This is Pine Barrens habitat. This is vernal pools, coastal plain ponds, just a great place to get out in Kingston and forget all about the developed world and enjoy nature. And we're we're moving forward, and that's the idea behind that portion of this article, is just to increase the protection of that area for the purpose of the habitat, for the purpose of ensuring that that area, as it gets added use, we did just get several hundred new apartment units in the parking lot of the mall that are now filling up, and that is walking distance to our trails in there. So we know we're gonna get a lot more usage in there over time, and this is one way to just make sure the whole area is protected and is able to take that added capacity of trail use. Overall, this article I envisioned as low-hanging fruit. This is a way for no cost to get these parcels that we all vetted, being myself and the Conservation Commission, as being high-impact parcels that are in the tax title program, and they're considered high-impact because they either abut our existing conservation or open space properties, or they abut important resources like the Jones River and its tributaries. So all of these are just an easy way to get these things transferred over. There's very little financial liability to the town. And I always like to throw the little plug in about the, the long time tax liability for conservation properties is about the best bet for the town. When you have development, you have the increase in services provided, particularly with schools, you're at a negative. When you have conservation land, long term you're in the positive and you have a better place to live. Yes, uh, Philip Wainwright, 18 Second Brook Street. I was wondering if changing all this land at conservation is gonna limit hunting in those areas? 
any way, shape, or form? Short answer, no. Uh, there are certain, if you go onto our webs on the conservation website, you see the conservation land rules and regulations. It lists off which conservation properties are closed to hunting. Oftentimes when that happens, it's because there was a conservation restriction with a third party uh, organization that doesn't allow hunting or it was perceived that there's no legal way to hunt in there with the setbacks from houses and things like that. So there's myself personally, and I think most of the commission are supporters of responsible hunting. And like I said, at Camp Nikon, we've seen an increase in hunting there, in my opinion, over the last couple of years from the general cleanup of the site and less disturbance. That's all. Thank you very much. Seeing no one else, we'll move this to a vote. This is a two thirds vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries, minimal opposition. 41. It's so Article 41 is a petition for street acceptance. Is anyone here to move that? To, to move it? Good morning, everybody. Amanda Sullivan, Delano Ave, 22 Delano Ave. I I'm sorry, I'm ignorant on the process. Do I read this and then say I want to move it? So my understanding is, and I'm going to defer to council, is that whoever petitioned this didn't follow the proper um, procedure to bring this before a town meeting. It requires a layout hearing before the Board of Selectmen. So it's actually it's out of order. And um, I will give you the reason why. Well, town council will tell you why. Yeah, so pursuant to law, you have to have that layout hearing. And prior to the layout hearing, there are notice requirements, posting requirements, et cetera. And that hasn't happened. So it's not proper. The mm -hmm. town meeting doesn't have jurisdiction at this point to decide whether or not to make it a public way. Um, at the Board of Selectmen meeting, mm, I want to say uh, three weeks ago or something like that, the petitioner did appear, appear before the board. This explanation was given to the petitioner. Um, the yes, the, the petitioner was my son and his wife. Oh, and, yes. And I do, uh, I believe there was miscommunication between the town and what was required to the petitioner. So Exactly. Yeah. So they're going to work together um, to see if there could be a solution that's workable, even if it doesn't yield dedication in the end, um, or if they still want to pursue dedication, have a layout hearing and bring it back again to the body. Correct. Okay. So, so even if you moved it, yeah. Sean will rule you out of right. order. That's what we were told that it wasn't. Gonna <laughs> it was going to be no vote to today. So That's he was. Right. My son and his family were here, but then they they had to, they had to go. But that was their understanding that there would be no vote today. Yeah. The okay. tricky thing is once it's on the warrant, it's on the warrant. We can't right. pull it off. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, is that it? That's, That's it. it. All right. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Article forty-two. <laughs> right. Pine, Pine Dubois, 93 Elm Street, Kingston, also president of Jones River Landing um, in Kingston and executive director of the Jones River Watershed Association. And I move that the select board make the intersection of Landing Road and Maple Street a three-way that is an all-way intersection in the interest of improved public safety as a speed-reducing measure or to take any other action relative thereto. Thank you. So um, as I said, we're at, uh, at Jones River Landing. Uh, those of you that know it know Landing Road runs between uh, Main Street and the town of Duxbury at Bay Farm. It is a scenic road in town. We're at the curve, uh, the oldest continuously operated boatyard in the country. 
And every day we have trucks backing up because they missed the reading of the sign low bridge ahead and the railroad bridge. And those that don't put on their little thing and their backup hit the bridge and call out the fire department and the police department and the record department and all those kind of guys. And there's a lot of cleanup. And I would say that happens six or seven times a year, every year. We've had people crash into the um, sewer department, actually rolling over the car. We've had people coming out of Maple Street and running into school buses. We've had people die on the road. Um, it's kind of like the Daytona 500, if you will. You know, they're coming out of Main Street because there's log jam on the road and they're trying to get somewhere in a hurry and they don't really think that there's a blind curve or people trying to get out of the boat yard or crossing the walk or pushing their children in a, in a, in a, in a wheel carriage or somebody riding a bike. A scenic road, this is part of the Bay Circuit Trail. For those that don't know, the Bay Circuit Trail extends from the North Shore and runs 200 miles and anchors at Bay Farm. It's important. It's also very narrow, very skinny. The bridge is very low, and we need to do a lot more. We were thinking that the 25 mile an hour speed limit in thickly settled areas would solve a problem. It hasn't had a dent, not a dent, except when I'm on the road, of course and I drive 25 miles an hour and get everybody really upset with me because everybody's in a hurry because we've got something else on our mind. I get that. So we need tools to slow things down. Putting a stop sign coming from Main Street to Duxbury right there before you hit Maple Street and from Duxbury to Maple Street right there so you can read the signs and decide which way you're going first will have all the difference in the world and it will, won't cost anything. So we're asking the Board of Selectmen as road commissioners to just put up those two signs and if it really comes down to it, I will donate them to you. Just so you do it because I think it will help us a great deal. Scenic Road, I think we should do a lot of improvements. I think we should do you know, crosswalks and all that kind of stuff. But this is a first step, and really there's an awful lot of people that try to walk that road. They're trying to go to Bay Farm, they're trying to walk down River Street to go to the Adena. You know, it's a great part of town. So please support us for a little bit of safety. So just to be clear, this is just advisory, meaning right. ultimately you could go to the Board of Selectmen and say, hey, town meeting said, give me a sign. They still make the ultimate decision here. So it's just an advisory opinion. It's not going to... If you vote yes or you vote no, you're not getting a sign. It's just to say town meeting said, give us a sign or we don't want a sign. So I don't know if that limits some of the questions, but. I'm just asking for a little bit more support than just us walking into the Board of Selectmen's meeting. Yes. Jean landis Norman, 84 Wolf Pond Road. I currently serve as vice president of the Jones River Village Historic Society. And you know that our property is right there at that intersection. The only entrance to that intersection is nearly a 360 degree turn onto a uh, town road to access our property. It's very dicey getting in and out of that property if you're coming from the south. If you're coming from the north, it's not a big deal because it's almost parallel to the main road. I am very much in favor. Our board has not voted on this article, but as a, as a member of that board and as a member of the community, I am very much in favor of this proposal and hope that the Board of Selectmen will take this seriously as a safety issue. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll get you. Yes. Uh, Mark Cordovone, 15 Old Orchard Lane. I'm a member of the Jones River Village Historical uh, Board member as well as the Jones River Landing and the Kingston Yacht Club. These three historic groups uh, use this intersection frequently and I'd like to ask for your support in moving this forward for the sake of safety. Thank you. Thank you. Select Board. So Sheila Vaughn, Southern Freight Street, Kingston, Mass. I want to say that on April 11th, we did uh, have this come for forward to us. And we, although we took a negative vote, it was because there is a study right now that is, we, yeah, we abstained because we were waiting for the study to come through, which this could go on the fall town election if it needed to be, if people wanted that. But we are waiting for uh, the study to come through. So we did abstain because we, uh, we are looking at what 
um, Oak County is stating about the needs of a stop sign. I'm not saying there isn't a need for the stop sign. We abstain because we're trying to get more data on this. So I just wanted to let you know that it is not that we don't want it. It is the fact that we abstained because there is a study um, for this in process. And so a little bit caught before the horse for, for, for me. So, I, so we abstained. So um, we're just going to wait for the study results. And if it comes up again, we'll see what that states. And then there is also a fall town election, hopefully a fall town meeting that this could come up on. But I, we're just waiting for those study results. Thank, thank you. Yes. Yep. We don't, we don't need time. I'm sorry. No, no, meeting. I'm just stating. Like, oh, I'm waiting sorry. for the study yeah. results. I thought you were done. Are you, do you need more time? I, there was a pause. I thought you were. OK. Yes. I'm Sarah Altair. I live at 41 Landing Road, which is the house, if you're going toward Duxbury from 3A, um, is right next to the railroad. I have witnessed this tremendous speed and tremendous um, difficulties because of people drive too fast for some 35 years. Well, I've been here 40 years, but I got really involved about 35 years ago. So you've seen me before at town meeting um, trying to do something about this problem. Um, I, if I, I see people walking. There are people walking their dogs. There are people running at all hours of the day, some at night. There are people going to the Bradford House. There are people going to Jones River Landing. Um, on foot. There are tons of people on bicycles. Um, and I just, um, I'm, I'm tired of talking about it. I've seen all these studies that Old Colony Planning Council has done for years, and they, they haven't gone anywhere. Main thing, they, they are looking at this, the flow of traffic. They're not really looking at the use of citizens by walking down the, the road. There are, there are sidewalks a little bit of the way. OK. Anyway, um, thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah. Susan Sherman, 215 Main Street. Ms. Sherman, this has got to be something new. We, we know it's not safe. New, new information, please. Excuse me? Just new I guess it is new because I'd like to know why. I totally support this, but I'd like to know why we continue to do these studies, which is which, what Sarah said. But the problem is, why are you not listening to the people that are telling you what's going on? Because they live there. And this is directed right to the selectmen. Thank you. Thank you. That's just. My name's Sheila. I think we're ready for a vote here. So, um, the again, this is advisory. This is just telling the voters selectmen that town meeting voted one way or the other. It's ultimately up to them. So, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. It passes with minimal support. Town meeting wants a sign. Article 43. Veterans Memorial. Bob Ketter, 17 Pembroke Street, Kingston. I move that we accept the motion as written. Second. Can you just read the description for us, tell us what you plan on? Yeah, I'll read it. To see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of 187,840 to fund the construction and related costs of a veterans memorial on the front lawn of the Kingston townhouse and to take any other action relative thereto. Exactly. Would you like to tell them what you propose, sir? Yes, I would. Uh, good afternoon, I guess. Um, the Kingston Veterans Memorial is planned to be located on the front lawn of the townhouse as you, if you had an opportunity to receive a flyer that was uh, given out to some of the people that came in here earlier, uh, it'll be a beautiful enhancement to the front lawn of the townhouse. This site has been chosen after numerous sites were evaluated 
It is the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen and the Town Administration that the front lawn of the townhouse is the appropriate location. The purpose of this memorial is to honor and recognize the contributions to our freedom secured by those who have served their country in its time of need. The Veterans Memorial Site purposes are to honor all service veterans, those living and working among us, those who have uh, died in service to our country, and those who have returned to hardship and difficult circumstances. It will be available for use by residents, schools, community groups, for gatherings and events of various types. Site features as a large patio area, seating, pathways, gardens, landscaping, flags, signage, and the symbols of eight branches of the military. It will serve as a day-to-day -day reminder of the freedoms we enjoy thanks to the service of veterans. The planning for this memorial began on Veterans Day in 19, uh, or 19, uh, 2021 at the uh, uh, Veterans Luncheon. And w the intent is to honor the veterans from the Air Force, the Army, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, Merchant Marine, Massachusetts National Guard, Navy, and the Space Force. This space will serve as a place for people to reflect upon the freedoms we have as citizens that have secured their service, that has been secured by their service to our country. By being on the front lawn of the, the memorial will be a focal point for the community to be used for recreation, reflection, ceremonies, weddings, commissioning ceremonies, retirements to name a few. Other towns have found more uses for the space than they ever envisioned when they started dedicating their memorial. We are certain our memorial will serve the same thing. By voting to approve our funding request today, we will be able to complete construction of this and dedicate it on Veterans Day, I mean, excuse me, on Memorial Day in 2024. We have exhausted all opportunities to raise funds through different commissions. Uh, we have been turned down, not because the project wasn't suitable, but because funding was unavailable. We recently have learned that the possibility, and I say possibility, of getting a $100,000 grant through State Representative uh, Kathy Lenatra is there, but it still has several more approval aspects to it that need to be taken place. But bear in mind that if the project goes forward, any money that we receive from the state will be offset in the overall project and the money will be returned to the uh, community as such. Well done. Yes. Hi, Jean Landis, <clears throat> excuse me, Jean Landis, Nauman, 84 Wolf Pond Road. First, let me state I am in favor of this project. However, I am concerned with the wording of the article because nowhere does it say that if there's additional funding received, this amount will, the equal amount will be returned to free cash. I also understand there's been some fundraising done by the committee, which I certainly applaud. So what exactly is the total cost what has been raised, and what would be the residual should the $100,000 be approved at the state level? We have gone forward with raising close to $35,000 to this point. Money has been expended for the study of the project itself, for the architectural layout, and all the things associated with getting us to the point we are at this time. However, uh, the, any money is expended, we feel that the $184,000, or excuse me, $187,000 will be able to complete the project. So what we are looking for, if the state comes through with their money, that the unexpended money will come back to the town. You're saying, but I don't see that anywhere in this motion, and I do believe that needs to be included. I disagree with you from the standpoint that there, this money came from other projects within the community that were funded to the full amount of theirs, and they did not consume all the funds that were involved there. And that's where it came back to the community. This money had been committed, I believe, in 2021 for projects then. Uh, I slightly disagree with you. I served as chairman of the Finance Committee. Free cash is normally excess revenue brought into the town, not just remaining money from previous articles. Thank you, uh, Keith Hickey, Town Administrator. Uh, I think you're both somewhat right. We put it's not that, so. 
This is this is very similar, I guess, in 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 uh, in, in the uh, similar to the article that was approved uh, last year for uh, conservation. We we approved funding uh, a portion of that coming from free cash, uh, and if if there was a, a state grant that was awarded, that money would go back to the CPC funds. That in fact happened. Uh, the hundred thousand. I'm sorry. The hundred thousand dollars you voted to return to free cash today is very similar to what you'll be doing probably next year. Uh, we didn't include any any additional language in the article because we didn't find out until earlier this week that the legislature included in the legislative legislative approved budget was a hundred thousand dollar earmark for the veterans memorial. So the intent is is very simply to. Any amount that, if the $100,000 gets funded through the state budget, and we won't know that until sometime probably late in June, um, we'll be back here if it's a fall town meeting in the fall or next spring, just like we did with the conservation funds, asking for the uh, voters to rescind the $100,000 from their appropriation and return it back to free cash. Thank you. Anyone else like to be heard? You could have said that. Okay, so we'll move for a vote here. All those in favor of Article 43 say aye. Thank you. <laughs> All those opposed? Article passed with minimal opposition. Article 44. 44? 44 is not being moved, so therefore we can move on. Article 45. It's coming. For Article 45. Can't believe we're getting it done this afternoon. Floor is yours. Doug Dondero, 14 Copper Beach Drive. Um, support for Article 45 is the taking. You, not make taking. The you just got to make the motion. Just read it. Could I have? Sorry. Use my glasses too. I could use your glasses, <laughs> but if I can say as written, as thank you, Buzz, with one Z. As I, 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 article. Say I move article. I move article. article. As written. 45 as written. There you go. Thank you. What would you like to say? I would like to say Article 45 is taking town-owned property that's been landlocked for many, many years and putting it into conservation. Um, the reason for this is Copper Beach Drive, which is the canary in the coal mine to this school, the athletic fields, and the other school, is right over yonder. You've got a barrier, a white pine forest, that we've had since the MBTA put in the train station, that has protected a neighborhood, has protected the school, has protected everything that's going on over at the uh, industrial parks, the wastewater treatment plant, the turbines, now we have a solar farm, and a train, and it has protected that neighborhood. Um, there's been no need for this because it's been landlocked. The property is zoned industrial commercial, and right now there is a 40B that's moving at a rapid pace, and it's going to destroy the integrity of a neighborhood, and eventually it will destroy the integrity in the community who we feel we have of the school. Um, the 150 apartment building that is planned, it's moving at a rapid pace. Um, like I said, the town already owns the parcel, so it's costing us, I guess, $77 to put it into conservation. It may not stop the 40B, but it's definitely not going to make the 40B as large as it needs to be to be profitable. I won't take any more of your time, but I ask you for your support to put these parcels into conservation. Question? Thank you. <clears throat> yes, Jean Landestorm and 84 Wolf Pond Road. 
I serve as the chairman of the Affordable Housing Trust. These are a buildable lots that could easily be used for affordable housing. There's no reason why they couldn't be. We have a dearth of property that's town owned that can be used for affordable housing. And what is affordable housing? That's for housing for individuals who have income less than 80% of the metropolitan area. It also requires that they qualify for mortgages and that they have sufficient income to pay for their house and all of their services. We're in a situation where we have less than 5% of our housing that is currently affordable. That means the type of people who work in um, minimum wage jobs or slightly above that have no way of finding housing here in the town because last year the average home sold for $620,000. You have to have a significant income in order to afford a home here in Kingston. I urge the body to please not place this property in conservation because it is buildable and we should be reserving town property that can be used to improve the situation with our affordable housing. Thank you. If I may. No, hold on. I'm going to give you a response. I'll okay. This gentleman. Uh, Buzz Artiano, 11 Clearing Farm Road. Uh, again, conservation, member of the Conservation Commission. These three parcels were on our original list that Matt identified uh, to be taken as conservation land uh, that we moved earlier. Um, I was not in favor of placing these three parcels in because they are three separate parcels. They don't connect to anything that we already own. And I felt like that they were going to become orphan parcels that would not be maintained. I understand your point and I respect it. Um, and I don't, other than that, I don't have a strong feeling one way or another. If you'd like to put it in conservation, we're happy to take it. Thank you. I Sir? think, oh, hey, Good Mark Putaboni, 15 uh, Old Orchard Lane, um, owner of 16 Copper Beach Drive. The developer that's working on that uh, 40B has a proposal in front of your Board of Selectmen to uh, exchange land which would allow for a three times the size uh, green buffer behind the Copper Beach Drive uh, subdivision. I think that uh, situation should be investigated before moving forward. Same reason I spoke to about the land being conservation. Once restricted, it would be unavailable for the exchange through the permitting process that the developer is going through right now. I appreciate Mr. Dondero's initiative, but um, the better solution involves the green space 100 feet behind Mr. Dondero and 16 Copper Beach, which uh, I currently own. And I, I believe board, you should vote no on this article. Thank you. Thank you. Select board. Um, I was one of the uh, votes that voted against it, and um, I explained to Mr. Dondero, the petitioner, um, some of the reasons, and I'd like to share those quickly. Um, once again, I do not like the 40B, but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, what my concern here with putting this in conservation is we might get to an inevitable, an inevitable spot where the 40B is approved regardless of that land. If that's the case, and it's, and it's in conservation, because we already the town already owns the land, but if it's in conservation, we, there's a chance that it might be in the best interest of the neighborhood in order to take that land and swap for a buffer. Now, I'm not saying that that's what we, you know, that, 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 that will help the 40B or anything like that. What I'm saying is if we're left with the inevitable situation that the 40B is happening, there's a possibility that a land swap might actually be in the best interest of the neighborhood, the abutting neighborhood, and the surrounding areas for some type of a land swap to basically make a barrier between that position. And so although I want it to be in conservation and I want it to be town owned, I also don't want to um, tie our hands into a situation that could potentially um, leave us with no other options 
but to have a disjointed situation that maybe could be made better. Now, it's, the town still owns it, so we still have the ability to, we're not, we're not giving it to anybody, but it, 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 it takes us away from the ability to make any kind of deal that might actually benefit the neighborhood if we are, in fact, made to do the 40B. Paul? Go right ahead. Paul Gallagher, 8 Longview Drive. Um, it's, it's so difficult to get up and have to address this again. I've spoke to this at least three times. It's been discussed as being property that we should sell. And at each time, town meeting has turned it down. The reason we don't sell it is because when the MBTA came in, that neighborhood was promised that we would continuously have a buffer for the community so that they didn't have to deal with all that stuff that was built behind it. And it was a protection. So if these people don't need this property to build, why are we, why are we giving it up? So basically what it comes down to is that these, prop, these parcels protect that neighborhood, your neighbors. If you, had, if you were living there, you would want the same thing. This protects the, the neighborhood so that they can't keep coming closer and closer and tearing down the entire buffer, which is what will end up happening if we, if we uh, allow this, if we, don't, if we turn this article down. They'll just come closer and closer after we had promised years ago that we would maintain a buffer. So please, I, I say vote in favor of putting these into conservation. It's not going to hurt us. It's not going to talk. It's not going to cost us any money, but it's going to protect your neighbors. So please vote in favor of this article. Thank you, Paul. But also, it's bigger than one neighborhood. Pine. It's going to affect the traffic in front of your location. We know on a regular morning, the traffic backs up all the way out to Evergreen Street. Uh, the growth will be unbelievable, and the traffic will be out of control if that 40B continues. Thank you for listening. Hold, hold on. We got a couple more. Yes, sir. Uh, Brad Randall, 10 Grace Beach Road. So I remember uh, when that development first went in, before there was a block, and you know people used just to fly down there on the shortcut to the mall. That development has been high impact, and you know these are the people that already live in our town. We should be committed to protecting them. Um, when we talk about 40 Bs, I, I respect the work of the Affordable Housing Trust. I really do, and it's important work. But there's little that we can do to stop affordable housing. The idea that we need to uh, not conserve land so that some, some, some time in the future we may need to develop it into affordable housing. The land is not developed right now. Uh, there's enough land in Kingston that is underutilized that is developed. So if we don't like the zoning, we need to have a discussion about the zoning that we have in this town. Um, but when it comes to protecting the neighborhood, it should be a no-brainer. That, and that, that's, that's, that's the viewpoint of this town. Maybe not this room. We'll see. Mary? Thank you, Mr. Randall. Um, so we, we talk a lot about this percentage of affordable housing and, and how Kingston has a very low percentage of affordable housing. I, I don't even know if we're at 5%, probably below it. Um, but you have to get above 10% in order to reach safe harbor and have the protections that you need in order to fend off these 40B developments. I'll be quite frank. I've been coming to town meeting here for well over 15 years. Um, we are never going to get over 10%. We will never ever reach the safe harbor in this community. People are fighting developments, and every time you fight a development, you fight the ability to increase the affordable housing component um, of our housing stock. So the fact is that when we hear, when I hear arguments about using a buildable lot for affordable housing, as if it's going to make a difference, it's just not true. Um, and to use these. We've had an affordable housing trust since, I believe, 2007 at this point. They have over uh, probably $700,000 in the trust fund that the town meeting has appropriated, and we haven't done anything with it. So if, this, if these, these parcels are protecting a neighborhood, our neighbors, but more importantly, the school, 
and the buffer for our children who are using our school fields, then I think it's important to support this article. I, ha I do have a question, um, either for the Board of Selectmen or for the petitioner. Um, who is the developer of the 40B project that's being proposed? Mr. Guidoboni? Okay, thank you. Mark Guidoboni, 15 Old Orchard Lane. For the record, I am not the developer. <laughs> I, I did sell some land to the developer uh, going forward. Um, Beneficiary. However, I would like to uh, address that if by voting for this article, you are actually uh, hurting the neighborhood because the developer's proposal of putting 100 foot of green space between the neighborhood and the 162 uh, proposed departments, which all count towards your affordable housing numbers. So to speak to Ms. M uh, McKinnon's comment, if you don't, if you, by using apartments, all 162 of these units count towards getting to your 10%, you will be making significant progress towards your affordable housing goals. However, only 25% of these units will actually contain affordable um, units. So it's a win-win twice. But I want everybody to understand that the 40B has site approval. Something will be built there on this commercial industrial zone property. So by voting this down, you will give the opportunity for the developer to put 100 feet of green space between the current houses on Copper Beach Drive and the apartments. The selectmen all have this vi uh, visual on this. I don't know if it can be presented to this meeting at this time. I have a copy of it that the developer provided to me. I urge you to not support this article and give the opportunity for the process to go forward and create a nice development with the buffers in place. Thank you. Yes. Jean Lance Snowman again. Let me just make a couple corrections. The Affordable Housing Trust has been in effect since 2017. And it's true that we do have slightly less than $800,000. As I said previously, with the cost of one home right now going for 620, we're not gonna be able to buy and pay for too much affordable housing with the limited funds that we have. More importantly, we have a housing production plan that allows us to reach safe harbor by producing a certain number of affordable units each year. And I, I can have this confirmed by our town planner, but I believe we may be on a path to have safe harbor for the next year, simply because we have produced sufficient affordable units for the year. Um, so it's not actually, you don't actually have to meet the 10%, but you do have to follow your housing production plan and meet the quota that they, lim they um, place in that. So we may very well be in a position of reaching safe harbor from 40 Bs. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Do you wanna speak? I just need to make it clear, as far as my, I'm concerned and, and, and what I believe to be true, um, the developer does not need these parcels to build what he's going to build. He doesn't need it. It's just our saying we want to protect the community that's already there as well. This is not going to affect the development. It's not going to affect affordability. I mean, I, I thought I heard Mr. Guidoboni mention that it was going to be affordable housing for all of them. It's not affordable housing. Every unit in there, however it is, two or three hundred, is not affordable. No one could build that and make it affordable. It, it just doesn't happen. So this is not about obstructing 40B. This is not about obstructing development. This is about protecting an existing community of your neighbors. Thank you. Just, just if you're at the microphone, I just want new information now. So if you get something new, then let's hear it. Megan Hickey, 40, oh, me, ahead, sorry. Yeah. Megan Hickey, 42 Winthrop Street. Um, I just want to remind people that a 40B takes all of our local bylaws on the books and completely ignores them. It's run by a state, not the town, so the town has very little say. We've seen this in town already with May Ave uh, in Post Court, Howlands Lane. We're threatened with a 40B every time. 
as a, a scare tactic. Okay, like you just said, it is not all affordable. There's a small portion of a 40B that needs to be affordable, as well as I'd like to also, I've walked this land with the Conservation Commission, and the land that they have suggested for a land swap has also been driven via, through by a giant excavator. So it is not in the same condition as the parcel that we are talking about. It's destroyed by an excavator. Um, I just wanted to make that aware that is new information. Hmm. And I just lost my train of thought, so sorry. Well, I'll give you a second. Yes. Uh, David Kennedy, 13 Copper Beach Drive. Um, I'm, in fa I'm in favor of this article for several reasons. I know some of them have been spoken of already. The bottom line here is, is that the development goes in. I know supposedly there's going to be a 100-foot buffer, but there's going to be a lot more trees that are, that are going to come down. The train is there. It'll be louder. The big thing is the, sc the, big thing is the schools, the amount of traffic. At the end of the day, this land should stay landlocked and be conserved. Thank you. Buzz Artiano, Lemon Clearing Farm Road. I'll be brief. Um, I was not aware of the land swap opportunity. Um, as conservation, we don't see any of those uh, ideas. So I, I'd urge the body to give the selectmen a chance to make that 100-foot buffer. We can always go back. These, these are town-owned properties now, so we can always go back next year or in the fall and put them into conservation if that doesn't work out. So I'd like to give the selectmen an opportunity to make this the best they can because that, that project is going to go forward. Thank you. Megan, you said you lost your thought. Did you have something else you wanted to add? You all set? Okay. Something new? Yes, sir. Um, it's my, from looking at, because I did look at the, the GIS maps, as I said, and it appears to me that lot 6627 actually contains a vernal pool. Can the conservation officer uh, agent confirm whether that's true? There's not a certified vernal pool there, correct, Buzz? Um, I can't confirm or deny presence it, of a vernal pool it's, on uh, site. All right, let, me, can, let me rephrase. What I can say is that at the most recent conservation hearing on the NOI filing by the developer, which is proposing test pits and borings on site as due diligence work, that there is evidence of a vernal pool on the town owned, one of the town owned parcels furthest to the north, I believe. Um, and, and, and that process is now working out between the Conservation Commission and the applicant as to whether they're going to show that on their plans as a vernal pool as defined under our local bylaw rather than the state. Um, so that's, that's where that is at. But their team did, so our peer reviewer last year found evidence of a potential depression that could be a vernal pool within a, within a vegetated wetland. And then the developer's team more recently this spring did find a spotted salamander and what they believe to be spotted salamander egg masses in that pool. Spotted salamanders are an obligate species. If there's more than five egg masses, that would meet the qualifications for certification. And, and is that that, uh, um, that lot 6627? I don't have a mental map of the property. Uh, it is the closest town-owned parcel to Cushman Drive. Yes. So uh, can, can the town planner maybe let me know that? Um, what, I, what I was, I've been on the Affordable Housing Trust. I've been on conservation. I think that that particular parcel that Matt and I are having this exchange about should be in the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction held by the Conservation Commission so that the roadway that's going to be proposed at a Cushman Drive and onto this uh, so-called paper road Thomas Street is, is, um, is done with, with that in mind rather than with the road in mind. And I think that that would give the town more leverage for that as town-owned property. I think the other parcels could be very useful in terms of what Mr. Guidoboni is suggesting or in terms of what Gene landis Nauman is suggesting in terms of getting more affordable housing in town. We need it. There's no question about that. 
But I do think that that particular thing, rather than having a fight to the finish and all the vernal pool dies along with all the rest of them in town, that we should protect that piece of property. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Um, Britt Opachinski, 15 Copper Beach Drive. I guess what I would want the town to also realize from what I understand about this development is that you're talking about the, the first opening coming off the end of Cushman Drive. It's a very, very narrow, no sidewalks, um, wetland, you know, streams on both sides. So you're talking about the traffic coming in off of 3A on that end, and then it connects is down at Marion Drive at the train. So you are now creating a super highway for every single person that has to get to the commuter rail, that wants to go to the dump, that wants to go to the, to the mall, and then wants to go to all these brand new apartments that there are at the mall. You, I live on that street and have for 15 years. The buses and the, the pickup traffic, we've all talked about the traffic, but I just don't think anyone can imagine the amount of cars that are gonna come zipping down that road. And I see the foot traffic now going from down my street from all the apartments and the Baymont um, is, it has increased, I would say, 100 times in the past year. The kids ride their bikes from Indian Pond down our street every single day to go to school. So I just don't know if everybody understands, and I don't know if that, I know it's not about this land, but I think that the town should really know and look at that piece of this development. I don't know how, I don't know how Cushman or Hilltop can accommodate that. And I don't know why that's not a hard stop myself. I think we heard enough, I, oh, Board of Selectmen. Board. Uh, select board, sorry. Can I, I, think. Can I just want to, well, I would, um, this is Sheila Vaughn, I'd like to table this um, to, to a, further, a further meeting. I, I would rather table it. I think that I'd like to see us work together on this and not, the conservation is, wants to work with us as well. I'd rather table it than, than vote on it at this point in time. But Is there a second to table it? Uh, so that's it. I need a two-third votes to table this. Nothing. So all those in favor of tabling this say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Fails. Yes. I'd like to get this to a vote, so can we? It'll be quick. Yep. Is this on? No. Raise your hand so oh. they know what you mean. All right. Is it on yet? Nope. Nope. Hello? Hello? Hello. No. No. Here you go. Is it? Still not. Okay, here we go. Um, Eric Crone, 43 Longwood Circle, and as some of you know, this is my sixth day on this Board of Selectmen, so I wasn't at this meeting. I'm learning a lot uh, today as well. Um, but my understanding, and please somebody um, interrupt me if my understanding is incorrect, but my understanding is that this 40B is going to happen anyway. So a lot of the roadways and the traffic and everything is going to happen. Passing this, this particular article isn't going to prevent any of that from happening. But my understanding is what this is going to prevent us from being able to do is to negotiate with the developer to try to put together a better barrier because the, my understanding is that the uh, parcels are kind of off. They're not in a straight line. So if we were able to negotiate with this developer to transfer some of the land, if we do that, um, it could put in place a better barrier. Again, I'm not for 40B and additional traffic, but some of that is just completely out of our hands. So I would recommend that folks not pass this particular article and give us a chance to negotiate with the developer. We'll still own the land. We're not gonna be developing anything. Anything else that we do with the land would need to come back here to town meeting. I'm so. gonna take a vote. I just want everyone to know. No, that no, no, I'm taking the a developer vote. No, 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 sir, you're out of order. I'm taking a vote. Please have a seat. Okay, have a seat, please. People need to know. I know. That. Have a seat. He's the one that's. The okay, one sir. Can... Please stop. Okay. All right, please. Thank you. This has been debated. Everyone heard everything. I'm going to take a vote on this. On Article 45. The the table failed. It needs a two-thirds majority. We took the vote. It didn't pass. The articles before the town meeting. It's ready for a vote. It needs a two-thirds ma majority. So all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. I'm going to have to count it. Buzz, are you on a conservation? I'll count for you.
if you're in the doorway, can you just step out of the doorway and can you take your cards out? All those in favor of Article 45, take your red or orange cards out so we can count. I have 32. 36. 36. 24. 24. All those opposed, can you take your cows out and raise them? Twelve, I counted twenty-one and twenty-four. Twenty-four. I counted because one of my tellers is on a, a board, so. So we have 92 in favor, 57 opposed. It did not pass. Just to be clear, article, the article failed. Um, the next one is article 46. Don't believe that's being, well, I don't know. Is anyone here to? to present Article 46. So that's not being heard. I, my understanding is no one's here to move Article 40. Oh, wait, hands up. Are you sure? Of, of which number? 46. It's just not binding. Th this is another advisory type vote. It's non-binding. Um, hi, I'm Megan Cannon, 61 Bogview Road, and for Article 46, this is to see if the town will vote to reject Eversource Electric and their contractors to run lines over the roadways in Tall Timbers Estates. Eversource will remove the newly installed monopoles in the Tall Timbers neighborhood and in any other residential in Kingston that were erected before a public hearing notifying the residents of Kingston. Eversource run the new high tension lines underground for safety and preserve the natural landscape of the neighborhood or take any other action relative thereto. Would anybody like any further explanation on this? 
Right. So, so the motion's to reject Eversource request to run town lines over Tall Timber State, having Eversource remove installed lines and having Eversource run lines underground. That's your motion? Yes, correct. Is there a second? Would you like to state anything? I would just like to state that the purpose of the Kingston to Carver um, re reliability project, I think, was simply to improve the existing power lines to prevent things like power outages and from things like weather. The purpose of this is simply that we ask that these lines just be run underground as opposed to over the roadway. The monopoles that were put up are huge eyesores and the residents of the tall timbers development were not notified prior to those we were notified of replacement poles for the existing wooden poles that the power lines run through so when these were put up everybody was quite surprised because we were not made aware and th truly they are eyesores hold on i'm just gonna i think this might have been some legislative action um um, so, uh, Sheila Vaughn, we actually at the last meeting uh, um, actually approved the the um, lines to go over um, the town. So I don't know how that affects that because we made the decision to have the the lines go because ever so came to the last meeting. So I'm not sure how that would go about that. It was a public hearing. Yeah. So this was a non-binding resolution in any event um, but it, it's a matter within the board's jurisdiction and they've decided I mean you can move it and vote but it doesn't have any force of effect or effect it's not okay. yeah. so uh, town meeting can advise the Board of Selectmen on this um, we did vote on it on Tuesday in our meeting uh, in a public hearing unanimously giving the authority to them to to, the, to run those lines. Um, and town meeting body, to the best of my knowledge, does not have the ability to tell Eversource to take down the polls, but I'd ask council. Correct. So it would it is. It's what the petition stated. So we, once a, a petition is properly given to the clerk for filing for the warrant, it goes on the warrant. So then legal counsel advises us what our authority is within the, the scope of town meeting. So. I don't know if that's helpful. Do, I mean, if you want to vote, we can take one. Can I just ask a question to town council? Sure, ask in the microphone, yeah. please. Uh, my question is just no, understanding that the selectmen have already voted. Is there any vote that can be taken today that would provide any recourse to the residents affected by the lines and polls? I mean, you could vote this and then the board understands what your position is, but you wouldn't have the authority to present anything new to town meeting if that's what you're suggesting. I'm just wondering if there's a way to reword the, art, the article to potentially have this re-looked at, or? Not really. I'm sorry. If you want, we can vote it. But it would serve no purpose. No, it serve no purpose. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. All right. Thank you. So are you withdrawing it? Okay. Then withdrawn. Articles, anyone here to present Article 47 or 48? No. Hold on, someone's standing. No, <laughs> the petition. Oh, no. No. I'll make no, it's, it, no, I don't need anything. Do, do, no, I don't. Are you moving the article? I don't need it moved. If you're not here to move it, I don't need it moved. Yeah, I want to move it. That means you're going to debate it. The petitioner just withdrew it. The petitioner withdrew it. If it's not moved. Nobody moved it. Anyone can move it. Anyone can move it. You have to be a petitioner okay. to move do an article. Let me do it now. Okay. Say. Go ahead. Twice. Twice. No, no, he said he can't. Anyone I'm can sure move could. it. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Have that. This is going to be fast. Just for clarification, no second and it dies, correct? If it yes. doesn't get second, the meeting will be over after another vote. Thank you. They wouldn't do that to me. But if he doesn't move it, the meeting's over. Move that the vote that the town vote to amend the town of Kingston zoning bylaws by amending section 5.2 of the zoning bylaw table of uses, commercial slash industrial uses, by, a, by adding a new use, filling and reclamation of land as permitted use in the C1 commercial industrial park district and prohibited in all other districts and further to allow the above sections to be renumbered in accordance with the reforming 
as approved under previous action taken by town meeting or any other action relative thereto. Uh, so we have a second, so let's debate it. Let's talk about it. Okay, uh, what this basically is, is about um, is the state has a, a program called Soil Recovery Acts. They, they, they make it sound like it's not as bad as it really is, but what it is is Kingston's taking out the good gravel, selling it, and the dirty dirt is what it is, is when they build a building in Boston, Worcester, any city or a place where the soil is not suitable for building, they have to get rid of it. Well, right now, Kingston's got an excess of two or three million yards sitting up there in the industrial park. Um, a vote no on this will stop any more dirty dirt from coming to Kingston. Okay, well, you can debate it up there at the mic. Yes. No, you're right. Hold on. David, Fu David Fuller, 233 Country Club Way. I believe, as stated, uh, there's an ongoing legal matter here between the town. Maybe what so effect good. may our vote have on the pending legal matter? Hello. So to be clear, um, zoning bylaws work prospectively, meaning looking forward, you don't, uh, there's a certain grandfathering that occurs. My understanding of the litigation, it's not my piece of litigation, but in my firm, is that we've taken the position that um, the soil um, removal and importation is a prohibited use in the town of Kingston. And my understanding is um, at this initial stage, we've been successful in, in showing that. I think what when you said, Dick, are you hoping this fails so yeah. it doesn't come I'm back? In favor of this oh, I, I see. So what Dick is referring to is he's saying if this article fails, it can't be reproposed for another two years pursuant to Chapter 40A, which is the zoning um, legislation. So what I think Zick, Dick is trying to do is make sure that it doesn't resurface again. But right now in that current pending litigation, we take the position that you can't do it at all, right? They yeah, are. but they are. But they are. We're trying to stop they that. Are. Yeah. Voting no. Voting no doesn't allow. Right. Yeah, if you voted no and voted down this zoning bylaw, this exact zoning bylaw couldn't come back to this body for two years without the express recommendation of the planning board. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. And I have a follow-up, but I'll wait for other parties oh, God. to talk first. Go ahead. Okay, so just for clarification, um, and my understanding, so right now our bylaws are silent on this issue, right? Which council is telling us technically it means it's prohibited or not allowed. Right. Unfortunately, dirty dirt, in my opinion, has been coming into the town for years. We are attempting to stop it. We are in litigation. The party that brought this forward is trying to change the bylaw to allow the dirty dirt to come in and put it in our bylaw to allow it to come in. So a vote yes would allow this fill, this dirt, from other areas of the town under or state, e or state um, that's being technically reviewed by EPA to come into the town. So a vote yes brings this dirty dirt into the town. A vote no puts it concrete in our bylaws. No dirty dirt. Well, it gets us closer. Yeah. Move the Hold on, we got one more in queue. Excuse me. Oh, certainly. Paul Gallagher, and I apologize for getting up before the question was called, but uh, I think it's important to know that the, uh, the petitioner came in just maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago and asked not to move both of these articles. But it doesn't matter because it's on the warrant. It's on the warrant, and Dick moved it. 
but the petitioner didn't want to move it. So, okay. so uh, we're right. gonna let's take a vote. Move the For 47, all in favor of 47, say aye. All those opposed? No. no. 40, 47 fails, on to 48. Uh, <laughs> move that the town vote to amend the town of Kingston general bylaws by adding a new section 12A authorizing earth reclamation, including the filling and reclamation of land as set forth herein, or take any other action relative thereto. Anyone like to be heard? Nope. All those in favor of 48 say aye. All those opposed? No. no. Motion fails unanimously. I have one more motion. The motion to dissolve or adjourn. I, I'm sorry, I move to have the meeting dissolved. Do I have a second? All in favor? Thank you, everybody.